Okay, we're good. We're on live, guys. All right. Welcome, everybody, to the uh, first episode of The Great Rooms Podcast. Uh, today, we have uh, Jason Wilson, the creator and audio producer. Hello. We have uh, Brian Black, also creator and author of the story The Great War. Hey, how's it going? We have, uh, Graham Road over there, the uh, actor extraordinaire. Hello. <laughs> we have J.M. Scherf, the uh, composer. Hey, guys. And we have me, Brooks Bigley. I'm just a uh, host and fanboy. Woo! So, yeah. So uh, this is the... Uh, the inaugural episode. This is the very first. Uh, first, what what do you think? I mean, I'm excited to talk about this. What do you yes. guys think? Uh, it's been a roller coaster ride, man. It's been a lot of fun, actually. The uh, me and I, I know me and Brian have been going back and forth pretty hardcore the last. Just I can't even believe it's only been what three days, and uh, it's yeah, it's it's been fun. Like the reaction, reading the Twitter responses, watching those numbers, just it's, I, it's blows my mind Those numbers. If I showed you the spikes on our lips and it's, it's been a lot of, it's been a lot of fun. And boy, let me tell you what, we're finally here. The wait is over. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You deserve it, Jason. I want to, I don't want to uh, jump in as a, as a questioner, but uh, I, the, 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 the dream the time between you perceiving this show and the official launch, it's been a huge journey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's oh, been yes. a very big learning experience, man. That's for dang sure. It, I, I was just a guy who knew how to do audio. So all this other stuff has just been, you know, it's, it's been, been rocky but it's been fun because i've had you guys you know you guys have been great 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 wonderful human beings uh you know hold, kind of hold my hand and uh, it's been a lot of fun but yeah it's been a journey that's a nice way of saying it <laughs> brian what uh what are you enjoying over there i'm enjoying a nice cold raging bitch mm. <laughs> wow what was the last half of that i heard something else <laughs> i i know i that's <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know if you can see that, but that's exactly what it is. It's IPA. This show is for kids. The Belgian IPA, Raging Bitch. It's it's my, probably my favorite beer. Graham's shaking his head like, oh my god. I didn't. I did not move my head at all. <laughs> <laughs> hey Brian, where um, where are you seeing uh, people who are downloading the show? Like, where at in only America, just in California where I live? Like, where where's this all happening? Uh, the only currently the only listeners to our podcast are in California. Okay, okay. I I asked my family to download it multiple times. So is hopefully. that is that where your mom lives, Brian? Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, that's where I live, man. She, she's uh, our best fan, and when she watches this, I want her to know that we know that. We oh, thanks. I love you, mom. <laughs> yeah, that is true. This is her favorite beer to you, mom. It's her favorite beer too. Yeah. <laughs> um. Actually, no, I gave her one of these one time and that didn't do her too good. She, she got very loopy and pretty much passed out on a chair. So too much raging. Gosh. Too much rage. Yeah. yeah. Rage. 8.3%. So, you know. Nice. Um, <laughs> so we uh, rank yeah. currently 64 in um, in the arts category on Apple for, um, you know, in the United States. And performing arts for the United States were ranked 31. So good job, guys. Wow. Huge. Nice. Yeah. Uh, you know, Great Britain, they really wow. uh, enjoyed Graham so much that it puts us up in 129th. <laughs> Everyone thinks Top the hard, uh, accent's authentic. If, oh, wait. I'd been, if I'd been upper, if I'd been upper class British. Wait, well, I thought uh, you did a dang good job, man. Well, yeah, thank I you. No, I thank you. Right? But but the lower class, maybe the lower class British accent. Is less popular than the I don't know. I'm just uh, I'm playing a class uh, angle there. I will say uh -oh. this though, Graham. Don't hurt your fast wars. Was, that was just for the arts category. The performing arts category for Great Britain on Apple is a uh, 44th place. All right, there you go. Oh. Well, it's obviously I, I think these numbers are fascinating, and uh, but I, I'm I'm guessing that they can become incredibly 
uh like they can play with mess with your head if you want if you watch them too much and you're like i wonder oh it's been four hours how are we now yeah then you go down to like 500 place yeah <laughs> yeah hey yeah. We, that's how it's been i'm not gonna lie that's how it's been. <laughs> yeah and then you get hungry again you're like oh i gotta get back up there oh wait till they get that next episode australia we're 362 so we're not we're, we're, oh Oh, that hurts. Oh. They're, they're angry with us with the spider story. That's yeah. what it is. You know, they, they got you know, I think it's because Australia was originally developed by the oppressive British people there. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, they didn't <laughs> enjoy Graham's accent at all. <laughs> no, they didn't. Yeah, that was a sour note. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, wow. Love, I love you, Great Britain. By the way, my my father's an adopted British immigrant. There you go. Thank you very much. I'm originally from Canada, and apparently our numbers are not good in Canada. So Canada Performing Arts, two hundred and thirty fourth place. And I apologize for, <laughs> but of course that is what uh, we do as Canadians is apologize. So it all works. <laughs> Thanks, Canada. <laughs> yeah, but but Mexico ninety fifth. So. <laughs> You know, we're doing okay. All we're, right. There we go. You know, Mexicans like to, to hear about the Great War. They know what's up. They know what's up down there. <laughs> now, this was World War One, right? Getting suntans, listening to the Grey Room. That's what it's yeah, like. that's a good question, Brooks, because I, I remember, I think after the fact, I was like, this was, wait, was this World War Two or World War One? Yeah, I, I feel like I remember trenches were definitely World War. And plus, you used the word Fritz, and I thought that was more popular in the first world war mm -hmm. telling the Brian, germans us, Brian. yeah you you had to do all this research i didn't do any research oh you made it all up mm -hmm. i did i you know i said forget it it's not worth it. that's work but oh, wait you must at least know whether it's one or two. <laughs> oh, uh civil war civil war hey <laughs> <laughs> there you go <laughs> plot twist plot twist <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I really saw <laughs> the bottom line is that war is the same wherever it is, yeah. right? Just like war is Paul, eternal, universal. Get uh, get Ron Perlman here, and he'll tell you war, war never changes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So um, <laughs> I really, uh, I really am interested. Checking everybody out. <laughs> <laughs> We're so Jason, Jason, I'm really interested in like hearing like the process just from like, okay, so you started with the story uh, yeah. written by Brian and there had to be like the very first thing that you started on. Was that taking Graham's vocals? What, what did you do to begin the process of making this episode? Yeah. Yeah. Actually it was like, uh, me and Brian figured what? they wanted to use this story in the process. And then, uh, yeah, and then, uh, actually, it was. Uh -oh, like, I'm hearing myself here. Brian figured they wanted to use this story. And Brian, Brian. Sorry, I'm, I'm guys. I can hear myself. No. <laughs> oh my God, we've turned into a no sleep story. Oh boy. You you know you know if I if, if I if I may there Brooks, I'm gonna actually jump to one of your other questions real okay. quick because this just ties together so beautifully. I worked in radio for probably about the oh, latter half of seven years and there was nothing worse than when somebody would call in and they'd have their car stereo radio up brian <laughs> so, so anyway. that's what that was that was you brian <laughs> what well yeah. here's the thing to be fair i just yeah. remembered that we have people on youtube that are typing to us mm -hmm. and i thought oh you know we need to go oh that's right so that's why i just went on there and then you know the backlash of I hadn't muted you guys on YouTube yet. So oh. can, can I make an observation? Uh, show of hands if you're wearing headphones. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't want to mess and up my show hair. Of hand, okay? uh, show of hands if you have a beard. Part of the hair. <laughs> oh, right, cool. I've got a beard. Yeah. That's three out of five. Beards win today. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, no, but uh, yeah, it was a process. Brian and I decided we wanted to use the story because... I don't know. I, I thought it was a good one-two punch. It wasn't just so much of a scare right away out of the bat, but it was definitely something that's going to just kind of shake you and say, oh, okay, this is well, we're in for some kind of a ride. And then uh, Brian put it out there and Graham said, hey, I want to do this. Well, 
I love Graham. I think Graham does a wonderful job, and I'm not going to say no. We all heart <laughs> just, <right. laughs> just kind of. And uh, then after that, you know, Graham uh, reached out to Alistair, who is an absolutely stellar voice actor. And uh, those two did all the voices. They got me, they sent the recordings to me. I listened to them on my mail route. And then uh, I was going on to, online and I found a little uh, a musical set, like a, the very first opening scene, and it just fell into place. It was literally like hitting dominoes, man. It was just, they fell over right from then and there. So, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. So um, when you got Graham's vocals for the story and you were ready to kind of just lay everything out, begin the process did you have like already an idea for like the mood in terms of like music that you wanted to use or like how did you go about did you decide to get the sound effects first uh you know every story is kind of the same i i actually uh being a I, i've said this before you know it's a beat the kind of a beating the dead horse i'm gonna say it every time i'm a postal worker nothing else to do but put headers listen to stuff all day and so i started listening to stuff at first I, I wanted to find an ambience for a battlefield because i knew the second i knew it was a world a war story i knew that i wanted to come up with some kind of a battlefield sequence something i wanted mm -hmm. to have something i was thinking saving private ryan you know i'm thinking like uh you know like uh shoot what's a what's another one i could pop up and not not like uh that was that one starship troopers you know they're running down and the creatures are coming up and there's just stuff going everywhere i just i just wanted this big explosive blow some eardrums out experience and then i stumbled across that uh that title theme and i put that in there and the one battlefield ambience that i had and then it just fell into place it was just kind of like just filling in the gaps because graham and alistair did such a great job it was really easy it was kind of plug and play okay yeah, that beginning scene, um, or the first battle scene that I remember where you hear um, the bombs dropping, uh, and Graham's talking about, you know, Fritz. But that was basically the very first, one of the very first scenes, right? Um, yes, that was actually the first thing he said was the bombs dropping on him. Okay, so I, I'm in my car driving uh, to work, listening, you know, in the morning time to this episode, and just it was just so beautiful to hear. I don't want to say war is beautiful, but the audio, the sound, the way you put it together, the way those bombs are just boom, 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 and the different speakers and ta 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 ta, you know, hearing the rifle shooting, boom, boom. It, uh, it was, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. You did an amazing job. Thank at you. That, putting all those sound Thank effects. Thank you. I together. appreciate it. There's a, a lot of beer that went into that. Uh, just <laughs> and love and love too. Of course. So <laughs> both are always important. Where it's do you get your sound effects from? Is that a trade secret? Uh, I, as right now, I'm I get my stuff from Audio Jungle, okay. and uh, I, you know, sometimes I get stuff from Pond Five, but uh, I kind of I don't know this price thing. You know, I I don't have bottomless pockets. But Graham actually pointed out a website to me called Sounds, and I just started actually really looking into that, and I think next year I'll be using that. But right now it's uh, Audio Jungle, so each one of those sound effects is purchased. At, for every story as it goes, so build in that library, man. Explosions in your backyard. <laughs> yeah, that is. Say what? I thought that was the secret. <laughs> <laughs> you just blow stuff up. You just blow yeah, stuff just up blow and stuff record it. <laughs> yeah, hey, man. Hey, you, you got me. I am in rural Nebraska, so you know we don't have nothing else to do out here. <laughs> yeah. So I was asking because you, you can anyone can buy sound effects. Anybody, I can go buy sound effects. Doesn't mean I know how to use them appropriately. So. I was wondering, like, how you uh, determine, like, do you, did you have, like, a thousand different bomb sounds? Because it just, I got lost in the yeah. story. So I closed my eyes, and, like, I'm not hearing, like, okay, he chose a bomb drop here. He chose a rifle shot here. Like, I'm just, I was immediately immersed in the story. So you, Good. you clearly picked everything appropriately, and you knew exactly where to put it. How do you determine that process for a scene? Well, I'd also like to mention that I think Jason's really good at, at, creating a soundscape that surrounds mm -hmm. you which is its own art and i'd love him to talk about that because there are people who just build their sounds in and everything is layered and it's, yes. it's coming at you in one channel and mm -hmm. you don't realize until you hear what jason does when it's all around you uh that it's that it can be a lot more uh artful mm -hmm. oh it's definitely an art 
Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I, I, um, I, well, when I, when I listen to these stories, I listen to these sound effects when I'm figuring out which ones I want to use, you know, I was in the military for eight years. So the war one was kind of easy. I rem I remember crawling with claymores. I know what it sounds like and feels like with the sand falling and everything like that. But, um, I just be as, as possible. So I'm not going to go with a sound effect that's going to just sound cheap. Yeah, there are thousands of explosive sounds out there. And you know what? I have an eight to 12 hour day at doing the mail to listen to those thousand sounds to mm -hmm. find the ones that I want. And then as far as uh, Graham says, well, a story is a story, but we're creating an experience. And, and, and you know, the world is three dimensional. I can, anybody can put music, sound, and words out there but you know if you want to give somebody a, a movie without actually seeing it, it, it may, engaging engaging their internal theater so to speak mm -hmm. then you need to make it binaural you need to go 360 mm -hmm. man so that, i definitely i'm always trying to make it as widescreen as i can so i, I actually appreciate that graham thanks i appreciate yeah. it by the way you have a great shirt <laughs> <laughs> oh this thing oh yeah um i managed to get one of these great gray room t-shirts um it, it people who are listening to this on friday are not going to know uh, or see this great gray room t-shirt but you should know they exist and you can get them at t public you know yep, for now for now i'm actually talking to a local vendor here about doing something different one of these shirts as well whoa you too i mean yeah it's it's amazing i i love t public <laughs> <laughs> you're redeemed for now. T T Public made this shirt for me. Wait! Oh my gosh! Oh man! Yeah. I thought I was original. But I'm wearing I'm wearing the one that you are guaranteed to get if you are a top tier patron. That is the skeleton key. <laughs> oh, he's got his key. That's right. Oh. That's a guarantee. I should have I should have wore my key. I am I am a failure of a fan. I am so sorry. You know what? You are, you are top tier. Where the heck's your key? I, I that's what I'm saying. I'm just gonna leave now. We're yeah. done. We're done. <laughs> yep. he uh, opened. Think, uh, Couldn't lean far enough. You know, I, I do think that uh JM has his key though, doesn't he? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. My kiss my key every day. It's right here. There we Boom. go. Boom, check it out. Oh. Yeah. Just really, uh, just a podcast about pimping merchandise now. Hey, <laughs> I was very happy that and actually got to, to to speak on JM there. Um, he really helped me set the tone for a lot of stuff, just with the how the podcast was going to run. You know, alongside Brian, he actually was the second person I talked to about this podcast besides Brian. He wrote that theme song for me. And I'll tell you what. It was literally, what was what was it like a fifteen minute conversation or something like that? While I was delivering my mail one day, and then boom, you created that masterpiece. And I tell you what, that's that theme song gets me running, brother. That thing down gets me pumped every time I hear it. Wait, are you guys neighbors? You guys are both in. Uh... No. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, when you said you talked to him, no. when you, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I thought I mis misheard. No, he commissioned me. Actually, uh, he found me online. Graham, I'm still not Graham. sure how. I'm sorry. I'm right I'm having a uh, <laughs> sparkling sparkling uh, spring water. <laughs> I've obviously uh -oh. Uh -oh. this episode is it. by Trader Joe's. <laughs> <laughs> I probably was drinking the thing the same same thing last time. Anyways, crazy. crazy. At least you can read the ingredients on all Trader Joe's foods. I, I'm I do doing that. Good. I'm doing that stupid. Uh, I'm doing that stupid restricted eating sort of. Uh, they call it a pretentious uh, as hell. They, they call it no. They call it. Uh, oh, I'm uh, sorry. They call it. Uh, what's it called? Something fasting. But, uh, Whatever. Fasting. So I've intermittent Something fasting. Oh, so yeah. so after my eight hour window when I can eat, I I can't can't drink. It's frustrating because that in the evening time, it's just it's the one thing you you want in the evening is you're like I just want to you know whiskey or something and you're like i can't my, my, my sparkling window, water my you window's closed window. so the fizzy water sort of uh helps with the cravings okay back to the show <laughs> yeah brooks <laughs> yes yeah. you know you did use the word ah, this is the best. Oh, this I is my, so anyway that pretentious i had actually asked by the way just to jump in on that <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> 
No, but you seriously, have- again, it was like, what, 15-minute conversation jam? That's what it was, right? Yeah, yeah. You uh, sent me an email commissioning me, and we had a conversation about it. He told me kind of what you were looking for, and I just – the theme just kind of popped in my head. I worked on it. I think I had it to you with like within a couple days. Yeah. And I was very happy with your response. <laughs> Yeah, well, I was very happy with your response because I'll tell you what, I think, I mean, I was, I was listening and I was like, dude, I, I can't wait till people hear this. And actually, Brian sent me a tweet, a text message with a uh, screenshot of a tweet that was, uh, I think it was Olive something podcast. Olive Gosh, dang it. I actually went and followed them. What was that? Olive, Olive Hill podcast. Oh, yeah. Olive Hill top. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And those guys were like, it was in all caps, holy effing, you know, that about the about the theme song and it that just makes it all that much because if you're going to set the pace we're coming out of the gates running man it's like boom we're swinging we're kicking so Mm -hmm. a lot of fun solid introduction (laughs) um do you uh uh to back to jason um i do want to get to you jm about the music i just wanted to finish up with uh with jason here um do you have other ideas kicking around for other podcasts or like, is that a hush hush or you just have been with the gray rooms for so long. This is just that passion project that you uh, choosing to work on. No, I am. I am. I am Mr. Gray. And uh, as of right now, 100%. The only thing that I care about is working with uh, these fine, fine, fine individuals that for some reason I have lucked into working with <laughs> to create this just absolute, I mean, I, I'm. I mean, forgive me for sounding, you know, a little, little, maybe a little out of line here, but I think that we're doing a really good job. And you know what? I couldn't have done that by myself. It's everybody around me. This is a great team, and I have nothing but confidence in this podcast. And I don't want to look anywhere else because I think that our fans and the podcast and the people all who are working in it uh, deserve a hundred percent. And I think that we have a lot more to deliver. A lot more. Well, now, Jason, you did talk about that crafting uh, podcast you wanted to do. Well, oh, I well, I said, you know, I, I actually did say, you know, well, I don't know if it's public I'm just, knowledge. I'm just, uh, I was just strife. being silly. I I, help if, if you really have one, I, yeah. don't I thought it would have been fun. I wouldn't yeah. dismiss it. Crafting, <laughs> crafting with Jason. Like 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 making baskets and things, crafting. Or yeah, exactly. I was trying oh, to no. trying to go for a little joke there the about quilting. what would be the, the opposite of the gray rooms. <laughs> you know, like uh, bottle cap, houses. bottle cap art. We are learning so much tonight. We're going opposite of the gray rooms. <laughs> what is the Patreon? What what are the patron rewards uh, for the crafting rooms? What uh? Well, yeah, uh, <laughs> the crafting uh, uh, yeah, blankets and yes. uh, we have patch up holes and maybe place a zipper and a button or two. I don't know. I, have, yep. have, I don't know anything about crafting. <laughs> oh, nothing about crafting. <laughs> I mean, bush craft good, crafting you craft good nightmares. Audio. Oh, you yeah. got it there, Rex. That's good. Yeah. You, you, you craft crafting other things. Craft there. beers. Crafting. You craft beers. nightmares. You craft crafting audio. Nightmares. Yes. Oh, thank you. That's there we good. go. You're a, a nightmare crafter. Um. All right. No, yeah, that's yeah. that's awesome. You are one hundred percent committed. That that is great. Um. I, as a fan, I just I am floored by the. Well, I couldn't even say a progression because. Well, okay. Let me roll back here. When when your first uh, little teaser episode came out with Graham, I was just like, "What is this? This is this is awesome!" Like, there's no monsters involved. There's no like supernatural stuff going on here. But like, I felt, I felt Graham as he was falling. Like driving in my car, I just felt that. I could feel it on my chest, right? I could feel that gravity, you know, sucking me down because of how well you put everything together. So hearing that, that because that was the very first, other than your trailers, that was your first story offering. I was blown away. I was like, "Let me sign up for this right now." Uh, I think I think I became a patron no. like like that day or the day after. Um, but yeah, like I I don't want to say progression because right. progression almost sounds like the episode before was less, and I don't mean it in that way. There's just been an evolution of your stories, yeah. and man, for the sure. Great War is just I've listened to it six times already. So it's, yeah, it's that's own, what Brian told own, me. My own bias. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you you, you, sound ha- like you me. single-handedly put us like three points up the arts charts on <laughs> yeah. iTunes. Yeah, keep keep it on repeat. So uh, I, yeah, I do want to say though, Brooks, those uh, animated uh, versions of the art that you did, 
uh, were just oh, yeah. yeah. And they, oh, yeah social media. Great. they really did I, help us. I mean, I wasn't expecting. I don't think any of us thought that was something was going to happen. You just took it on yourself and you made those, and it really got a lot of people's attention. Um, if you don't know the Great Room's art for the episodes, um, uh, a lot of them have been made by Mediogre. Mm -hmm. Ogre. Um, Mediogre. Yeah, I, I didn't want to say mediocre. I was like, "Oh no, uh, mediocre!" And uh, it's he's also the 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 text, the font, and the uh, lookalike art was made by um, Cassie Pertit. Um and uh, also um, now we have, have Brooks who animates things, and it's it's really cool. Uh, I thought not awesome. the dead though. I don't animate the dead. I haven't learned that yet. <laughs> um, but, well, I feel like you've used that joke before, Brooks. Hi, I literally just pulled it out of my, you know. So, but when you look at the when you look at the original <laughs> artwork that Mediocre Stories did, which is so cool, and then the fact that you not only animated it, you you made the tail like you you didn't just put some flame on it and give it some flaring <laughs> eyes. You made the tail waggle. That was hard uh, to do, actually. I was not impressed by it, but I'm glad that you were. It's so great. Oh, you kidding me? That was awesome. That was yeah. ridiculously awesome. I just felt like the tail was going up and down. I I mean, because I'm working with something that's already been created. So right. I, my limitations. But How do you do it? I couldn't make it swing. So It looked magical to me. I mean, get it up yeah. and down. Lighting up. Dude, my favorite one. My favorite one, honestly, I love the Grey War one, but just the Grey Room's logo with the lightning. I thought that was sick. Yeah, oh, that was awesome. I was like, wow, that just made that logo just that much. It's just super dark. So, yeah, you well, did got, a great job on that. I got the idea because you have a door like kind of mm -hmm. incorporated a little bit into your into your logo, you know, yeah. like the light of coming through, like like if a light in a hallway was on, but you're in a dark room. And so, yeah, the inspiration to me was just kind of like um, making that text flash in and out because you you can't really see anything in a dark room. And so I just kind of pictured flickering lights. And honestly, since I didn't create the text or anything, I just took that from you guys. And I just could, again, work with what I had. So I can do cool I things. Do a great job. I love it. Yeah, that's, a, that's <laughs> so cool. It's just that extra bit of polish that makes us all look professional. Hey, anything to get more <laughs> attention on you guys. That's all Speaking I of which, about. nice shirt, Graham. Thanks. Thanks. It's just the green rooms. <laughs> <laughs> How did you decide on gray with an E instead of gray with an A? You know what? I, I you know, I, this is so funny that you said that because uh, we, we were literally just having this conversation at my other job two days ago. I had a person who's an avid fan who just comes into that uh, place and talks to me all the time. Maybe they're they in our chat room. E. Mm. Uh huh. Maybe they're in our chat room. Oh, maybe. I don't know. Maybe I, you know, I'm, I'm only in our chat. I all right. But and anyway, they, they asked me, they said, so why an E? And I said, you know what? I was always taught E for English, A for American. But for me, for some reason, the E just looks right. It just, it just I, I don't know. It, it takes the word gray and it kind of made it, I think it gave it a little bit more of a darker feeling to me. I, when I look at it, it looks mean. It looks gray. <laughs> it looks gray. And, uh, my whole life, I've always thought it was E2 because, again, my father is in, uh, is is from England. He was born there and everything like that, and he was adopted and then brought here. And my grandmother's, well, my his my grandmother was uh, British, and so I have a lot of stuff that, you know, she did that I still do. But I, I don't know. I just always thought that E looked, it looks right to me. I notice yeah. uh, some people who... <laughs> maybe have other origins like from Canada will put the U in words with an O. Like we say color in, in the United States, C O L O R is how it's spelled. But yep. C O L O U R and instantly mm -hmm. like I'll know where someone is from just by reading their text and seeing that. Um, it's interesting to me. Hey, uh, Christina is saying that he's not telling the truth. Oh, so call him out on it. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> About what? It, he said, <laughs> She said that you flipped the or no. Christina said he didn't know it was wrong until I told him. Oh, yeah, wrong. no, she's right. Wrong. What do you mean she, wrong? What's wrong? She, she's right. She mm. told me she told me that I was spelling it wrong. It was supposed to be an A, but I had always I have always E looks better. It always just looks both. like E to me. Yeah, it is both. I both. know it is, but I, I attribute that to you know my dad's side of the family. I've always used E. I just see an A. The only 
thing I associate a G-R-A-Y with is a crayon. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, there's 50, there's 50 shades of G-R-E-Y, so... Boom! I mean, that's... There's 50 of them. How can we argue with that? How do they spell their gray? Well, wait a minute. With an E. With an E. For your crafting podcast, hey. you can have the gray rooms with an A. <laughs> there you go. There's the second time. Today we're going to be crafting with light gray and a combination of <laughs> dim gray and burnt gray. Don't forget gray is gray. It's gray. It's gray. Really best. So this is an IP gray. There you go. <laughs> I, like that. I, like that. I had to go there. So, so Brian, can we can we plug your brain a little bit about about the story? No. No. Okay. All right. Well, I'm glad I was here. <laughs> yep. you, you, you gentlemen, enjoy your night. I'll short interview. I'll see myself. <laughs> Go ahead. It's it's fine. <laughs> I mean, um, if you have to. If you have to. Yeah. I mean, we're here. Well, yeah, I guess. We're uh, so, I mean, this is going to be the most obvious question. What inspired you to write this? Where, like, this obviously wasn't one day, and then it was. What flipped that switch for you? Yeah. So when I was talking to Jason about joining the gray room as a co-creator yes <laughs> hi jason hi jason it's oh, jason oh my God. that's a nice shirt that you have I just wanna... uh, um but uh i think the thing is is i realized it wasn't the first story i had given jason that story is coming up but the uh whenever i joined the gray rooms as a co-creator i realized that we needed something that was going to be really action-packed something that something that was really going to get people's attention and something that would give him um, something to play with. I wanted to have all kinds of like sound effects and I wanted to do it, but what was I going to do? And I always was interested in world war one because we don't really, I was talking to some, a, a friend of mine um, and he kind of agreed with me. I don't know about you guys, but when we were in school in the United States, they didn't really cover uh, world war one. Yeah. Just world war two. Yeah. That like was civil war, world war two, man. That's it. Yeah, so it was something that you know, I really enjoy um, steampunk. It's kind of a private, you know, my own stuff I've been working on. And I like to borrow things from, you know, from World War One eras, like your Zeppelins, your biplane, <clears throat> whole things and try to incorporate them. So I started doing some research and I realized uh, I wanted to find what was really scary about World War One, you know, besides murdering people and stuff. But the idea that the these part. rats were just, you know, the size of cats. I mean, really, the things that I was including in the story were things that uh, I was learning about as I was doing research on rats in World War One. A lot of it's true. Um, they were the size of cats. The the sound that they were making as they were rattling around those cans of bully beef and stuff. They heard that at night. Um, and I could just imagine just how many of those cans there were and how many rats there would be to make those sounds. So as it, I was doing this research, I started realizing, okay, you know, I want to tell a war story. Um, I do want to have the rats, but I want to have just a little bit more than just the rats as well. You know, you have to kind of go into who this guy is and what he's dealing with because it is a war story. And so uh, I kind of pitched jason on i said hey jason i want to do a world war one story with rats and he goes cool so that's pretty much what happened so you didn't have it written already like you didn't pull it from like your backlog of stories or anything you no, it was, wrote it specifically yeah it was it was written in spring uh i i just you know i was talking to him about it i told him i was going to do it and so i did it and i said to him i said what do you think graham knew about uh i was telling graham a little bit about it he knew that it was something that was coming up. He, in fact, Graham was even working on his uh, his vocals for it. He was saying, well, you know, is this guy an officer? Is he going to have, you know, an uppity British voice? I said, well, I want him in the trenches. He's going to be a, you know, a much more, um, you know, rough and tougher kind of Brit guy who's seen some, some terrible things. And, you know, he's not going to be um, the uppity Brit kind of voice. And so Graham says, all right, I'm going to work on it. Uh, he kept, you know, and he was all excited about the story, sent him the story, sent Jason the story. They all liked it. Then I sent the story to Gary Bowler and, um, who has a story, um, that we're going to have as well. And, um, he kind of read it over because the one thing I was concerned about was if I'm telling a story 
you know, I'm an American. There's things that I probably mm -hmm. see um, that a person, you know, in Britain during World War One would do that probably is just a stereotype. And I didn't want that. So I kind of ran it through Gary. He kind of did a little changes to it to make it more British. And, uh, you know, there you go. <laughs> authenticated <laughs> authenticated a, little a little bit. bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want it to be somewhat authentic. Um, Candace uh, Green just asked me today. She's like, can a rat really bite a person's finger off? Um, no, I don't think in one bite it could bite a person's finger off. But rats can chew through concrete and all kinds of things. They chew. So they can do it, just probably not in one bite. Mm -hmm. so that's One of them loosened it and the other rat finished it. There you go. It's Same <laughs> way. It was a rat king, actually. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Multiple rats all taking parts. I uh, I really appreciated the story because um, I mean nobody knew what to expect. This was going to be your first, you know, debut episode basically, and and we had the artwork, so we knew rats would be involved, and it was clearly a military helmet, so we knew that was going to be involved. Um, but I had no idea what to expect, and I listened to so many like horror podcasts that I'm so happy that it wasn't like some mutated rat monster that was attacking people because there was, you know, a nuclear lat. Well, this was the early 1900s, so it would be no nuclear, but you know what I mean? That there wasn't some curse that made a giant 20 foot tall rat. Your story was very rooted in human in, 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 um, normal everyday life. Yeah, the every man, uh, Graham just plays this every man soldier experiencing this just horrific, horrific situation. I mean, just, absolute nightmare the way that you pulled that out of the story was absolutely amazing oh thank you so much it's funny because graham is the everyman he's in everybody <laughs> you know, he's voice acting everything everywhere no but it's great um the i think that i wanted every story i do focuses on people mm -hmm. um you're gonna have all kinds of stories you're gonna have stories of focus on the action and you're gonna have you know focus on the violence or the gore I'm interested in how people tick. I always have. I think that's what differentiates horror in general. I mean, you're going to have your slasher movies, and then you're going to have yeah. your movies that are more psychological, and you're going to have your different types. And for me, I want to know why people do what they do. Um, and I think that in this situation, yeah, I mean, I I obviously have you know millions of rats attacking this poor man, but really the story is more about you know, he wants to get his friend home. You know, he wants to get his friend home alive. He wants to survive himself. And I think at the end, he kind of laughs at this idea that, you know, I won the war by myself. My you favorite know? part. I told you yeah. that. Yeah. My, My favorite, favorite part. part. He's, on He's on the German, German side. side. He's like, I won the war. Yeah. I mean, I'm the only one left. Long. Yeah. It's, but I was worried. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what's that? Oh, okay. Um, oh, was, <laughs> no, I just agreed with you. I said, oh, yeah, that part. I remember that. He starts losing his freaking mind. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it's it's weird, though, because I was worried before it came out that people were going to think that it was boring almost. Like, I hadn't gotten to the rats sooner, uh, that people really weren't going to care too much about this, this guy and his journey. Um, because, you know, a lot of it, he's just going through his regular day routines and everything. No idea of what's happening. And then I don't know what is like the last 16, seven, and basically when JM starts doing the, um, yeah. you know, scoring the, uh, the story is when the rats actually start to really yeah. become that threat. So it's almost like towards the end of the, of the thing that it happens. And I was really worried. I'm, I'm glad that people kind of resonated with that, um, with that kind of darkness that was happening and kind of building up. Um, so that's that's good. I think it, it. I hope that it kind of increased that that fear. Like, oh man, you know, here I am thinking that this is like a, a, a obviously there's rats in our artwork. So, but I hope that somebody is like thinking, oh man, these rats are legit. Like, this is a serious force of nature. It's gonna wipe everybody out. So, oh, it's totally believable. Hey Brian, we have a question from the chat. Uh, where someone bootstrap is asking, what is that meat? Which I'm guessing is a question about bully beef. Bully beef. Bully beef. Yeah, it's, um, you know, I, I guess the, the equivalent of spam from World War One. No, I, I think it's, um, when I was a kid, 
I really enjoyed the lunch meat, uh, canned corn beef, and I think that's what bully beef was. It was corn beef. Cool. Can. So it wasn't spam. Spam, World War II. Right, right. and spam I was a, diff spam was a different salt. meat, right? Spam that's was like a, like a pork product. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's grown. Spam. I think it's like a pot of meat product, isn't it? Like yeah. they just grow like a tree and just cut it off. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> just just tangential here, but uh, don't judge me on my YouTube history, but there is a gentleman who runs a YouTube site where he eats uh, military rations. from. Oh, World my War God. II. I know who you're talking about. Yes. I watched that guy. Yes, I, I can't. That guy, dude. I can't get my eyes off. I don't understand why I like yeah. it. So he, He'll open a tin from World War II that has meat in it. And clearly, if it's yeah. bad, I'm sure he doesn't record it. So he records the successful ones. But he will eat this meat from these sealed tins. And he opens the yep. ration and he explains each little piece and like, and these are the Phillips cigarettes and there's only three in this box. It's so fun to watch. But yeah, you can eat meat from 1940. Yeah, I, know, I love that guy. I know who you were talking about. I have one guy on a screen out in the living room. Me and Christina were set out there like watching this guy eat World War II paratrooper <laughs> rations. <laughs> And, and he always it's, smokes it's, the cigarette at the end. I love it. It's it's a I, great. I have no solid. idea why I watch this guy at all, but I watch him. Yeah, <laughs> he's a he's a good talker. He's just really calm, and he just explains. I'm eating this meat that's 67 years old, or however old it is. And he's listening, and he listens to the he listens to the Great War, and he's like, oh oh, I remember those cans of bully beef. Those are delicious. Had yeah, some I was gonna say, you think he's get, you think he salivates a little bit when he's yeah, little bit. That? <laughs> Oh, I, I would be one of those that Bullet beef's the best ever. I, I wouldn't say that channel is for <laughs> foodies. I would tell foodies to stay away. I, I like to think that Private Merton is, if he was still alive today, he would still be trying to eat that biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> the biscuit would survive, according to yeah, your exactly. writings. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Buried with that biscuit, even the rats would eat it. Notice the rats would eat those biscuits at all during the story. <laughs> before, before, uh, before the lead, what was that? What was Kinsley's first name? I think it was Edward, right? Because that's could, right, Eddie. Yes. I'm fine, Eddie. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Eddie. Eddie, that's right. Oh my gosh, that uh, total aside, but when uh, Alistair Mackey. When he, as Gary Buller, has that find that outburst, that emotional outburst where he where he tells Eddie to leave him alone and talks about that he's going to be the last one there burying everybody. That was just a just a, an aside uh, to Alice there, who we didn't even. He's in England. I don't think we could have worked out the time zones to get him here, and we'll definitely include him behind the door for a certain man in Russia, which is later in the season, and it's going to be all him. Um, yep. but, but, but that moment, uh, and a testament to you, Brian, and, and to Alistair was when the whole story hit in an, in an emotionally, like it, it, it ticked the story that you're listening to up to another level when you realize that you're going to be emotionally and mostly affected by what was going on. And we were still just meeting these people. I, I was, uh, just want to compliment that whole thing. And everybody who did it. Oh, thanks. It was, I think Merton was, and all of Alistair's characters were really like the the characters that, I don't know, you, you wanted to be emotional about. You know, like Merton is this goofy kind of like guy who just can't seem to get over the fact that he is this biscuit. And then all of a sudden, all these people come running in there during this kind of comedy relief set scene. And you don't know if he dies or not. I mean, who knows? Maybe he got away. Maybe Merton is still out there. But um, when you had like Gary, I wanted people to feel extremely, you know, I wanted them to feel bad for this guy because, you know, he's, I mean, the guy just wanted to dig holes. Yeah. You know? <laughs> just, just let him dig holes. He could have made it. Alistair did a great job with it. When Alistair, uh, actually when Alistair was Merton and he says to, um, you know, to um, Kinsley, he's like, you know, I, I don't think he's, um, you know, I, I forget how he exactly says it, but he's basically, it's my story. I don't even remember. How, yeah, But, uh, Shame on you. you know, he's, he basically is like, uh, um, you know, something's not right. And he, the way he whispers it to him was just really powerful. It almost made me think like, wow, this Gary character is, is the, is the problem with this whole story, you know, but, uh, you know, 
obviously there was more to it. I just I love what Alistair did, and I think um, I think what yeah. what, what Graham did um, with both of them really. You could tell the emotion in their voice. You could tell. I mean, because that's the thing. As a writer, and I think all of the writers are going to notice this in the gray rooms. Um, you know, Bo just noticed it. He's in the he's in the uh, in the chat room there in YouTube, and uh, Candice and Mike Lee. I don't know if we all expected it, but to have such professional voice acting people that really care about what they're doing and have kind of um, have really perfected um, what they do, it's to to breathe well life into those words that you're writing um, is great. I think if it was a really bad narrative, it would stick out and we'd all be like, oh, that's my story. What are they doing? In this case, it's like, oh my goodness, they're doing my story. And it's a different kind of sensation. And, you know, I mean, you really do feel emotional about it. I mean, if I can write a story and feel emotional as I'm writing it and then have that feeling that I got when I first uh, wrote the story from hearing it being narrated for the first time. I, I think that's that's just fantastic. Oh, that that's got to be a great adrenaline rush to see something you created on paper acted out that way, and being able to hear that professional uh, landscape in your ears from something that you just wrote on paper. Yeah, oh man, it must feel great. That's awesome. Can we uh, can we pick you a little bit? Can we poke you with a stick, Graham? About uh, your wonderful acting. You may. Story? You oh, may. Let me pull really? You out. think it was wonderful? It was it was pretty, pretty good <laughs> for a lower class uh, such as yourself. Um, I uh, literally asked Brian uh, whether he was uh, whether this guy was going to be an officer or not or not. And uh, because I have two British accents and I have upper class and I have lower class. And it's, hit, it's literally hit us with some. Uh, for for an upper class Britishman, he's more like this, and he's an officer, and he he's uh, uh you know go um, storm the the Germans and come back and have some bully beef or something, and then <laughs> and that's that's much more easy. When when I did um uh, very clinical, I did the Broadway production of Mamma Mia for two years, and I played a British, an uptight Englishman. That's my specialty, and um, <laughs> everything in its place, right? Yes. And then, uh, so so I, I don't actually get asked to do um, uh, uh, lower class very often. So that's just, you, you know, dropping the things and you're doing the thing and you talk like this and you do. And if you've got, don't, the tricky one is when you're saying it doesn't matter. It, it, it feels so weird to drop both the double T's, just drop them right out and you feel like oh, no one's going to believe that's real. Um, <laughs> I think it is. You did great, man. <laughs> I did a great job. <laughs> and, thanks. And when you get in the zone, it just rolls. Um, but the tricky thing is, of course, is Alistair is uh, British, and so, and also, I knew you know people like Gary Buller would listen to this. They're going to be people who are authentically British listening to this. And um, well, Gemma, Gemma, a more yeah, is British, say? and she said <laughs> a nice thing. So hopefully, no one listened to that and went, "Oh God, who's that guy trying to do a." cockney accent i just call it lower class just lower class okay and that's not demeaning or anything i because i i let my ear enjoyed that's, that's probably accents. demeaning sorry yeah, yeah thank you okay like, and i'm i am the worst self-critic too like i will listen um and and beat myself up we're, we're all our own worst critics mm -hmm. and and i will say this that uh, of course i listened to it after i recorded it and if anything stood out i would re-record that bit to make it sound better but um uh, I didn't hate myself. Let me put it that way. But not just sound too. Not not just the the accent itself to make me think you're British. But even like your cadence. Like uh, there was a scene where um, you're you're uh, saying how what you think he's digging, and you pause and you say, "Oh shit!" And it's the way that you said it that, like to me, I was like, "He's totally British." That is totally a British way to in my American. Right, here, I guess I was. It was just very believable to me. Again, I was sucked into the story and didn't see it as you making a performance. Thank you, thank you. I um, uh, the two things is one one just in terms of I the other sidebar about my British stuff is that uh, I'm originally from Canada, and I w was raised on a lot of BBC television, 
mm-hmm. and a lot of Doctor mm-hmm. Who. Uh, and so uh, that is always spinning. And th- that's where that accent, those accents come from. And um, the other thing is, is um, you know, as an actor, this is what I do for a living. Uh, and uh, quite often I'm waiting to hear from an, my agent about an audition and I might get a job and that job is two months from now and so you can't do anything until you do that job and then that job is two months or three months and then it ends and you're looking for the next job and that's all it can like one job can be six months of your life and uh what i love about the gray rooms and acting in this format is that i get to do what i'm i've been trained to do and i get to do i I don't have to I, i i can do all these different stories, these wonderful immersive stories. And, and, and so that's what excites me about this is that I can dive into these amazing stories uh, of the gray rooms. And um, it's like, it's, I feel almost, uh, I don't know. It's, 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 it's getting to do what I've spent my trained my life to do and, and not having to wait for someone to say uh, for the phone to ring. Right. Um, And, and that's what I, I'm so excited by. So so when I get a, a wonderful story like The Great War, uh, I dig in with 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 both hands and uh You get to like put the jacket on, you put this character on that uh yeah. you become. Right. And as actors, we're we're kind of um and the great thing about acting is you get to do I said this the last time on the last behind the the door is that you get to do all the exciting stuff of life. You get to live the high the highlights. Mm-hmm. Um, so to be able to throw yourself emotionally into the, the excitement and horror of a war, uh, but not actually have to live it in real life is, is, is great. And it's, it's a high in itself. Yeah. Now, how did you make, yeah, I did a great job too. You know that, you know, I love what you do. You always do. <laughs> it's, it's probably where everyone's very impressed. I mean, crazy. and falling. Remember, falling. You get to fall out of a plane to your to to, to your death. Um, and when is that? You know, that's something that you can't do in real life. But to be able to 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 put yourself in that headspace just for a little while, uh, just to see what that's like. <laughs> and it's crazy too that Graham is easy, but it's the antagonist of that central story that we're building. That's his voice with that crazy echoey kind of oh like, yes the the story on top of the story yeah so i mean grant oh yeah that brian wrote as well yeah um and of course jason is the guy who is going through the door so i think jason is a an unsung hero in voice acting as well i think he was doing a great job jason did a great job mm-hmm. yes as uh, as uh, can we name names as raymond oh well, we got spoilers here we yeah we want Spoil away. I, I think I know the last um, behind the door. We were kind of afraid, but I think we should just assume the people have watched the episode. Okay. At this point, we should just feel free to talk about. I mean, if I, if you haven't seen it, I'm sorry, but you probably should watch it first before you see the behind the scenes. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, the odds are that if someone is here watching this live they're they're hardcore and have listened to the episode and those yeah. who haven't who are hearing it next friday they we've given them a whole week so besides the episode appears before what this will become yeah. as an episode well, in the podcast list right so all right um i wanted to ask you graham yeah <laughs> <laughs> how did you how did you um like I don't want to say maintain character because clearly once you are comfortable with the character you're playing, you're going to be able to affect it properly. But I'm assuming that you don't record everything all in like one session or like one night. So there's going to be slight overcross between days, right? Yeah. 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 This, okay. when, when it's a, uh, uh, when it's lengthy, when, when it ends up being, I think, you know, the audio is roughly 30 minutes uh, for the main story. I could be wrong. Yeah. There, it's just, it's just, very difficult especially when you're starting and stopping uh right so yeah in terms of sort of getting you know you just naturally find a i think i probably stopped uh you know one night when i was recording i stopped after 
uh, Edward Eddie got knocked out and that's a natural uh, stopping point. Mm -hmm. And then to come back um, and record the next segment, um, it's just, you just sort of take advantage of the tonal change of the piece as a sort of, you know, a bit of a restart, uh, not entirely, but it, it helps you come at it. You don't have to work yourself up to the exact same mindset. You can allow yourself to come in on a different level. Um, right. It's a slightly different scene. Yeah. Starting again. So you're not going to come at the same intensity or, and, and I noticed too, that you, you still pulled off that um, you were much more calm and you, like your character was very like, I, I felt as a listener, he, he knew what he was doing. He wasn't confused by life. He wasn't confused by war. He was just going through it. Um, I felt like your character or you portrayed the character as really handling this immensity of this, this horrific situation going on that you clearly were freaking out, but you were still sane while freaking out. And to consider you recorded that from beginning to end over the course of more than one day, I didn't, as a listener, I didn't see a break from the beginning to that. So I just figured you went through the motions. Okay, we're getting towards the end of the story. So I'm getting a little bit more frenetic now. I'm getting a little bit more worried about what's going on. You did an amazing job tying it through all the way through. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. The, 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 what, what is tricky about the story and is interesting about the story is that the very first scene where the bombs drop and, and it's chaos, um, but for Eddie, it's not unusual. It happens. Uh, it's a commonplace occurrence to have bombs drop and people screaming. Right. So there's the, dich the dichotomy of those sound effects but the narration is somewhat well this happened again and damn it i got mm -hmm. dirt on my uh on your bayonet uh, on my mud. bayonet i got mud on my bayonet damn it because i just cleaned that and it's so the the question is what is it that uh that gets him that freaks him out if this is his everyday life uh what is it that makes him panic and, and lose his calm and i love because if you start him, that's the other thing which is fascinating. Because there are there are people who narrate uh, stuff, uh, stories like this, and they start out at such a high level, and they stay at that high level through the whole piece that it mm -hmm. it it's it's almost exhausting exhausting to listen to. And and I'm all about trying to find the where you know starting at a level and get, that gives yourself somewhere to go, um, and. I love the break that reset after Eddie wakes up because we go through all of this chaos and it's one of my favorite moments when he wakes up and everything is silent mm -hmm. and there's a reset of almost into a new reality. And what I love is that the rats have been established, mm -hmm. but we don't know that it's like, it's like the third act. Right. Uh, when, when you hear, when he discovers, um, uh, Gary's body and anyway that's that's not about my process I just want to stop and say I love that sort of that third act where everything is silent and because we've gone through all this chaos and all, all, all we've already gone through hell and the mm -hmm. audience is like well what what is there left and that's when the real horror uh, arrives I think that's amazing well the silence is very foreboding it's um yeah. and it's used to affect in a lot of actual military movies that like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That, that really quiet sound kind of yeah definitely again back to to jason putting everything together really good call yeah i think we lost jason yeah oh, oh did we he's trying to come back um oh. oops <laughs> didn't didn't care for the conversation anymore <laughs> it's like i'm done with you guys i'm done <laughs> megan is by myself now he's He's making a picture of mojitos. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps a bathroom break. Is Christina still there? Oh, he'll be back soon. There we go. Okay. Okay. And everybody um, loves Bo. So, hey, Bo, we love you. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, let me just say that, uh, yeah, Graham, you did great work. And uh, I listened to you for hours <laughs> and hours while I was working on the last 15 minutes. And uh, I didn't get nice. tired of it. So, Thank right you. Now. That is that is a high praise. <laughs> I know. I know you have to listen to it a lot. Yeah. 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 Not only when I'm uh, writing, but after I write, I listen to it and listen over and over and uh, think of more ideas and go back to it. And yeah. you know, I spend the next day 
over and over. So I didn't get tired of it. So that's great. Yeah. <laughs> can, can we get into that for a little bit? With the, I didn't with hate you. I didn't grow to hate you. Yeah, let's switch. It's a great segue. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. So so J M. Like, did you get to hear uh, the vocals or any kind of anything uh, in order for you to start creating uh, some music for this? What was so, your process? Uh. Yeah. Um. Jason told me, contact me, said, "Hey, you know." I've, would you be interested in working on regular episodes besides just the title? Uh, so I said, yeah. He's like, all right, I got one. Uh, I'm going to send it your way. And he sent me only the last 15 minutes. Yeah. So I didn't get any of the beforehand. All I got was the dark and the dread. Uh, <laughs> once uh, once uh, Eddie wakes up. So and I went from there and uh, pivotal scene. You know, yeah, yeah. You missed so, all the happy stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, yeah. I so I had no idea what happened before. All I know that it was bad, and uh, so, <laughs> right in the middle of it, right? Right? So then, when uh, you know, I, was, I was spoke to Jason beforehand, and uh, he's like, I want to go for a dark and cinematic, and I was like, Sounds great! So, and I just went from there, and uh, it's it's hard to explain. So, you know, when you're when you're just listening, it's it's different than scoring to like a film. And that's why I was very interested in this project as well. It's because you're just going off, off the audio and the mm -hmm. cues. The sound effects were in there. There was still some watermarks uh, for the sound effects. So, uh, you know, like you, sometimes you hear audio jungle come in. And it's, so it could be distracting. But just going by the audio cues and, and figuring out where I should put maybe like a stamp strings or, or I should have a low bass here or some kind of weird sound effect just to, to keep the scene going it was it was it was different because i wasn't looking at something happening i had to imagine it as right well. see it in your head never had to work on something like that before and let me tell you it got me into it mm. uh, i had a, I had a great time doing it and uh you know now i'm working on some new episodes and uh it's it's just uh that flow is going a little more so like what kind of um what kind of medium do you do you work in? Um, is it um, all digital, like um, a, like a controller keyboard connected to um, yeah, like this software is, on the computer or what? This is pretty much it. I use a, a DAW. It's a digital audio workstation, and I own okay. many sample libraries uh, that uh, string sound effects. Basically, you know, whatever sound you could think of, I I have uh, purchased. <laughs> Uh, and spent lots of money on over the last few years. <laughs> you got uh, your collection going. Yeah, yeah. So I have basically a huge toolkit. To, so whatever pops into my head, I can pretty much, uh, you know, I can I can write it. Uh, I also, I play guitar and I kind of like fake play piano. I, I can figure out what I want to play and, uh, you know, I fix it after I record it, make it sound, you know, perfect. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's just... Uh, tinkering around sometimes sometimes i'll play on the piano uh to get a feeling of where i want to go or i'll grab the guitar actually on one of one of my guitars over here i have i can uh, i could actually it, it's got a synth a pickup so it can uh it transmits midi which will trigger notes so i could actually make my guitar sound like a violin or ah play, that's cool i could play drums on it and it's a nice little creative tool just to to get away from the keyboard i could just stand up over here and just fiddle around with the guitar so there's a lot of little things that you could do to make it creative most of the stuff i think of though is when i'm not working on music when i'm driving or mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that if you have like a, a melody that comes into your head do you just like record it really quick i hum it into my phone and it's a start I, I, i'm not really a good uh, singer <laughs> so i hum it into my phone my wife laughs at me but sometimes i play them for her uh -huh. she's like oh she's like that sounds great <laughs> I, I worked i worked in music many 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 years ago so i would do the same thing i had a little recorder and just just hear a simple melody and just just record it even if it's 20 seconds long and then you get home and then translate that you know to your your station and start building on that basically right right and yeah. even if i have uh, if i have a couple of minutes there's so many apps now that I can, you could download on your iPhone where you can 
you could key in MIDI notes and yeah, then you could actually you hammer it get, out on the phone. Yeah. Even if it's on a cheap little synth sounding instrument, mm -hmm. but you get like the melody down or, or the groove and, and you could take that home and work with that. It's, yeah. That's so important. Cause think of all vibe. the melodies, think yeah. of every melody you've ever like thought of that you didn't record or you didn't ultimately put down somewhere and it's gone. I think the best stuff that I've written, I thought of before I fell asleep. <laughs> Yeah. So you're you're not like an early person where you have the the best time doing music early in the morning. Actually, that's when I do work. Okay, uh, you do. Okay, I know some people prefer some people like they they're only creative at the end of the night. Some people like no, I get up really early. That's when all the creativity flows. I I learned to be a morning person because of my schedule. So yeah, okay. Uh, you know my my the my main studio time is on Sunday morning, at at the crack of dawn, and that's where I do most of my work. Um, it, you know, uh, saying my best writing is right before sleep. I fall asleep is when I'm in bed with my eyes closed, ready to actually go to sleep, and then something comes into your head. Ah, okay, okay, right. okay. That's, that's when your when brain you is in that state. That's when your brain is calm enough, calm down enough to to create or things mm -hmm. yeah. things uh, can filter in. Um, I had a weird side question, but I want to pop it in from Bo Chapel in our chat room, and this kind of involves everybody, but I think it might ultimately be for Jason, which is um. I'm going to read the hey, whole By the thing. way, can you hear me good? Do I sound like crap here? No, you I sound to, very good. Actually, you sound I, better. I, I, good. I had to come in on my cell phone because I'll tell you what, I don't know what was going on with my, my laptop, but. <laughs> oh, yeah, that. Did it turn off? Well, I'm, I'm glad we got you back for that raspberry. That's good. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, but the question is, uh, and I don't know if there's an easy answer. How did the music, acting, and sound all come together at the end like that? How did you work together to plan that crucial balance so no one element overpowered the other? Mm -hmm. Oh, as far as with me and uh, and me I'm and wondering Jay, if there, in fact, was a plan. Cause I, I think the secret is there might not have been a plan, and it was just Jason making it work obviously though jm was scoring and knew what was happening dramatically as well are you, are, so yeah you're talking about the last half of the great war with jm there i can't apologize i dropped off so that's what i'm assuming you're talking about yeah but um yeah well um uh, well we are all know that uh jm is an exceptionally talented composer oh uh all you need to do is listen to that dude Seriously, all you need to do okay. is listen to that intro, uh, the theme, the theme to the gray rooms. You'll know that he has some serious skills. But um, I just threw together the last half and I, I, I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do to make this sound great. Uh, you know what? I, and I, I actually I, I've been toying around with this. I was talking to Christina for a while. You know, I would love to eventually have uh, JM part of this. Just because, you know, I mean, the, the theme, I think he has skin in the game. I think that he just exceptionally, just a really skilled individual. So I, I sent him a message, said, hey, do you want to do this? He said, yes. And I, I, and I literally threw him this here. <laughs> and, and he is so good at his, what he does, he did well, that. And I'll tell you what, he, he turned it up to 14, man. He turned it up. Thanks, thanks. Wow. What's, what's funny about that is uh, I did the title – and uh, that was back in like April or May. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, I get custom jobs and, you know, I talked to Jason and then we, you know, I, you know, started following him on Twitter and I'm keeping up with how the Grey Rooms is doing. And then the first preview episode came out falling and I listened to it and I'm like, holy shit, I need to get involved in this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then Jason contacts me and I'm like, hell yes, I'm in. Yeah. As a, you know, it, uh, it seems like a good, such a good creative opportunity uh, yeah. that I couldn't, I couldn't pass it up. And you did a great job, man. Like you literally, uh, we've been working this way, even with the new projects that I've been giving them. I literally take uh, the dialogue that I'm given and then I just space it out. I, I you know, I obviously I, I do my my compressions and everything else like that to make the dialogue sound good. And then I add the sound effects where I, I think they need to be. And I put the spacing in there for scene changes. And then I'll send him an email saying, Hey, this is a scene change here, 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 here. This is, this is it. And I don't tell him this is what I want. I mean, I don't think I do, but, um, and boy, yeah, he's, he's excited. just such a creative dude. And, and, and just having him, 
since he's been here, it's been just such a stress relief on me as far as the production aspect. And uh, we just had a talk today about um, the next story that you guys are going to hear. Uh, he's he's doing a lot of stuff in that. Uh, and it's just so easy to talk to him because I think that me and him, we're really like we are seriously thinking on the same level. I really think that we start, begin and end right at the same point. So. I expect a lot of good stuff coming out of this uh, partnership. I really do. Yes, me too. Yeah. That is awesome. Great. Um, so, uh, JM, I wanted to ask you, like, I, I just love to kind of plug people this way. What even got you into audio, especially because I have a slight audio background? What got you started in that? Like, what what piqued your interest? When did you start with audio? Oh, uh, well, uh, music in general has always been a big part of my life, and uh when I was 16, I, um, well, when I was like 10, I took piano lessons, but I quit because I didn't like being taught. And then when I was 16, <laughs> I, taught, music. Yeah, I taught learn myself it. how to play guitar. Um, yourself. And then uh, when I was in college, I was in a metal band. And uh, metal's my yeah, favorite band, brother. by the way. Yeah, and, man. Uh, so, uh, and then for a long time uh i would tinker and record at home mostly metal songs or whatever i can with my guitar and uh little by little i would get more stuff for my studio and uh at one day i was just messing around with guitar and i was like let me see if i could add some strings and then i started getting into you know thinking about well maybe you know i can move away from metal and go towards more cinematic music like some of my favorite music is cinematic music the soundtracks to star wars or my favorite of all time is the back to the future soundtrack yeah you know so you like there. that stuff has always been a part of my life graham sings too by oh. the way yeah yeah, yeah you too. get chills you get chills with stuff like that so i was like <laughs> so i started making the turn towards <laughs> cinematic and um, I started writing stock music, and uh, and that's what kind of like got me out on the internet. And uh, I, I would write stock music for people to buy and use in their videos or indie that, films or whatever. Is that like the infamous uh, what is his name, Kevin McCloyd? Kevin McCloud, yeah. McCloud, uh, he does like yeah. every creepy pasta ever. <laughs> yes, yes, and uh, he does the uh, he puts a lot of stuff out for uh, for free for everyone to use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I I didn't do that. I uh, I went. I actually my stuff was on the Audio Jungle Pond Five, and I have my own yes, website yep. now. Uh, so um, I've been doing that for uh, the stock music for I don't know five years now. Oh, that's cool. And, and uh, have you like randomly heard your music in anything? Yes, like, yes, oh, I have. So cool. uh, there's random videos. My or, you know my kids will come up and say, "Isn't this one of your songs on a YouTube <laughs> video?" And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that's I me. wrote that one. That's pretty uh, cool. It is pretty cool, and and my stuff has been used uh, through the stock sites on like network, uh, um, uh, more cable networks, Nickelodeon, Disney stuff like that, mm -hmm. uh, randomly, and uh, I usually find out afterwards. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but it, it's Wait, pretty cool. Works, man. Do you license? Yeah. Uh, like, let's say that you yeah. did like a five minute piano piece. Do you license it out so multiple people can? Can use yeah, it. Right? Yeah, it's a it's like an open license. Uh, open. There's a couple different licenses. You could buy like a cheap license to use your stuff on YouTube if it's going to be used in anything bigger. There's different like tiers. Uh, That's cool. You could go to my site and and you know I have all my stuff on there. And uh, what's cool? It's cool. It kind of like got me into the into writing more cinematic music. Even though there's almost every genre of music uh, on the site, but um, it's given me more opportunities to work with people like Jason who had this, you know, found my music somehow either on YouTube or YouTube or YouTube. whatever. That's what it was. And, uh, and, uh, you know, when I've, you know, guys like Jason, then they'll contact me and it's like, yeah, I want to do custom music. Uh, you know, the stock music is fun, but it's way more fun when there's something more involved. Oh yeah. Well, that's cool, man. And you know, if I can say like, um, when I initially started doing the gray rooms, um, I knew that I wanted to be creepy and, and dark. And when I started off with this, it was going to be actually more of a, almost like a ghost story, kind of a, kind of a feel. And so 
I was looking on YouTube and I actually found um, one of uh, JM's JM songs. I believe it's called. Oh my gosh, JM, you uh, help uh, me with this. It's like uh, uh, outer, ones, outer. Right? Uh, oh, the other one side. It? The other side. Other side. Yes, that's it right there. Yeah. And that one, that one like spoke to me, man. I, right away, I said, "This dude's got it going on." So I, then I went to his site, which uh, don't if 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 anybody ever needs anything out there, please seriously go to his site at jmsheriffmusic.com. Go to his stuff. He he has he has stock music on there. You can get I don't even very do my own plugs, <laughs> dude. Man, come on! I, I love your material. I mean, obviously, yeah. I'm gonna use it, but you you should. Really, yeah, man. Seriously, if somebody wants to get something done, if you're a podcast out there watching this and listening, go to him. He'll he'll get you something great. Just listen to our theme. Listen to what he's done with his song. But anyways, that uh, that that song just grabbed me, and and I went to his site and I started just uh, fishing through everything he had, and I was like, wow, this guy's this guy's really just nailing it. The sound was good. It was so full and just super high quality. And then I reached out to him, and I'll tell you what, man. It was so easy working with you, uh, getting getting in contact with you, uh, getting the song, and and just it's everything else like that. It was a lot worth it. So, yeah, uh, yeah, man, I found you on YouTube. So it was your YouTube that uh, that yeah. that made it happen. Yeah, isn't it crazy? <laughs> and I think you did an absolute stellar job in the end of this story, bro. You you brought it to life. Thank you. Seriously. Thanks. Welcome back, Brooks. Where are you going? <laughs> yeah, welcome back, Brooks. I do apologize. It's a uh, did, did, garbage. Did you night. shake it? I hope you shake it. <laughs> that, would, that would be embarrassing. <laughs> it's, um, oh, tomorrow's God, garbage, wash. and the the neighbors are making sounds. And I thought that I closed all the windows in the house, so I could hear oh it. I didn't God. know. If, I don't yeah, know it's if you only guys seven heard... thirty at night there, isn't it? It's only yeah, seven thirty yeah. there. West Dang. Coast time. So I don't know if you guys heard that. I apologize, but I had to go find the damn window, and close it. So, nah, come back. I was just talking about. I was just letting everybody know about uh, Mister Mister Sheriff, and it's an absolute pleasure to have Graham, uh, Brian, and uh, Mister J M there. Uh, it's these four people right here. If we can continue to keep this group together, I do think that the Gray Rooms is a force to be reckoned with, and we are definitely going to be something that people are going to hear from for a very long time. Oh, very long God, time. Yes. I just still can't agree. believe just it. Stop right there. Uh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> And good night. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic four. Where who who did the credits? Oh, the four the credits horsemen. Well, we did do. We did. We have been doing this for how long? I mean, right. it feels I, like it feels I, like seconds, but I think I closed the um, the submission period for stories in April, so it had to have been before that, right? So. Uh, no, we. I think we started in like around February. I think, your and about was February. If, if I may, with yeah, Brian, the, your first trailer was February, the one yeah. that you made all by yourself, and that's what I heard. And I was like, "This sounds pretty cool." Well, I came in after um, "Man and Lies." It's uh, the gardener was was done by you, Graham. Because that's right, I was first. So yeah, you were you were the first. <laughs> He's the, he's the second and before. Champion, I guess I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. I loved it. <laughs> Which, uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I actually, uh, I remember that um, Graham sent me an email about that uh, the, after the, the the trailer came out, and then we we started working some stuff out, and I was really sitting there just still scratching my head how I got because I went to he he included his email his uh, website in there. And uh, I went to his the website and I was listening to all these uh, samples that he had because he has a little demo reel on there and everything else like that. And I couldn't believe that this. I was like, really, this guy's talking to me. I mean, I'm just some dude yeah. who just kind of wants to make a podcast. I have no idea what I'm doing. All you guys, including you, Brooks, uh, MP3 and Wave, right? Yeah, MP3 <laughs> and Wave, yeah. You know, Waves I still are bigger. don't know what I'm doing. I still don't know MP3s what I'm doing. Are smaller. I, I, I know, I know this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what I was thinking there. But anyways. You were so I, excited, that's all. That's all it was. No, man, I, I think, I just think that right now, like, you know what, whatever. Brian has been, <laughs> a, uh, has been a breath of fresh air because I actually reached out to Brian. Um. Brian was on Twitter 
and then he was really cool with man and life said and like uh i my bro I, yeah well man we all love man good dude straight Manning's up amazing matter of fact all of this is Manon's fault oh, all of this. that's great i love man even out, more <laughs> i reached out to man and lyset he was the first author i reached out to and said is there any way I could possibly use one of your stories? Because I'm thinking I want to start a podcast. I'm just some dude. And he gave me the gardener. That was the very first story I ever had. And uh, coincidentally, it's the last story of the season. Isn't that weird? But uh, the best for oh life. my God. When we I, I when guess. we get there and we all hear the, the audio that we recorded like a year, a year ago, it's gonna be like we're gonna be so eager it'll be so hard not to be like i can do better now just let me <laughs> Wait, do did you again. record the last story first how what uh, are you... it's just yeah, accidentally I'm, accidentally i'm what? already there i'm already there graham i'm actually like once i finish the because uh, i only have three more stories to do and this entire season is done and um uh and, and poor and poor jm <laughs> granted <laughs> granted jm uh the next story you have quite a quite some time before that comes out yes, so yeah. don't worry I, I i actually he's such a trooper he, he threw me a bone by helping me by like hey, here's a story it's doing a week here's another story it's doing a week <laughs> i keep great dude. but anyways i uh reached out to brian on uh twitter and i said hey man you want to help me uh you know make this not suck and, and brian's <laughs> like i guess brian was like went to man and said suck. hey <laughs> Somebody, somebody says it to you like that. It's like, okay. <laughs> well, I guess Brian went to Manon and said, Hey, Manon, is this guy like, uh, you know, he's got daddy issues or something? And Manon's like, No, he's all right. He bought my book. And, and that, was a, that was a big thing. And Brian's like, I, I might make a book one day and this guy might buy it. And so then he responded, <laughs> I'm just saying. The only reason why I'm going to sell a book that I haven't written yet. <laughs> Hey man, well I'll, I'll buy it. It is what it is. Everybody but, uh, has a book that hasn't been written yet. Yeah, and, you got to uh, make it written. <laughs> yes. Well, so, so I reached out to Brian, and then we, he called me, and then I, I I pitched him the idea, and you know he's Brian. Uh, Brian's been there since pretty much. I mean, honestly, and all honestly, uh, since I can say day one, because when the podcast but I was got first. real, we've, we've established day, that day, I three, was day first. three, day three, day three, day three, day three. Sorry, sorry, Graham. My bad. I apologize. So I Graham day one, Brian day three. <laughs> yeah. That's right. I right. was That's in the right. morning of day one, and Brian was in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> I had to take time. Uh, uh, like fighting over a parking later. space here. I had to take time to research the Great Rooms podcast Twitter, which only had like five followers at the time. So Five? Was... Hey, man, I did a good job. I had started that <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah, well, I took it over, and I have, we have over 600. So yeah, Woo! That's right. That's right. I, I suck at social media. I'll just admit that right now. But anyway, that's the story with Brian. And, you know, it's like Graham and Brian. And now we have JM and it just like and all these wonderful authors. Boy, it's it's this has been fun. But it's it's amazing that, that, that when we first all sat down and were talking and you had said you I don't know when you guys picked the date, November 30th. I was think we were having one of our conference calls when that happened, which coincidentally I had technical issues on. I can't seem to not figure this technical issue stuff out. Your technical right. I don't know issues what's going on. are making <laughs> drink, and then, you know, everybody hears your drinks as you're drinking mojitos or whatever else. My mojitos. <laughs> I love mojitos. Um, I, I don't remember why we picked November 30th. I, I think we wanted to give ourselves at least, what, like six months or something before? Yeah actually did it we'd also figured out um we wanted to kind of capitalize on some of the holidays uh yeah. so we, we figured people would be off they'd be able to listen to some preseason episodes uh, i know we have a memorial day labor day uh halloween so i think we figured you know if we did we basically just wanted to do something right before the end of the year and i mean we also only had 12 episodes, but then now we have 13. So, And we're actually, oh, wow. we, we got that bonus. We just well, right. more work for ourselves. I yeah, mean, yeah, I know. But the fact that you guys, the fact that we landed that date, like we we, we said that's going to be the date, and and it was. Like that still blows me away. 
And uh, I mean, I guess if you give yourself, you know, that much time, you you don't have a lot uh, of excuses for missing it. But no, you don't. But it was I, I thought that was the most exciting thing to go to listen back to the, the the second trailer, the one that was the larger trailer and have them say November 30th. I'm like, well, we, we really did it. We did it on November 30th. <laughs> well, With actually, yeah. we we and I think it was before that. See, we have a P cloud. Um, it's like a database, you know, like a just like a, I don't know what Dropbox. Uh, Dropbox. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Like that. It's better than Dropbox. So, I think so. I don't know, but um, yeah, I'm right there with you. When everyone submit our stories, we drop them off in there, and then we we named them to basically like okay, we made sure that the author's name was there, and then at one point I was like, guys, we need to figure out like what days we're going to release this, and so we actually had every single date for every two weeks down for every episode, and we were able to give our authors the date of their show and when it would um, basically debut. And I mean, this is great. We're basically able to, you know, completely fulfill what we started and it's fantastic. And Jason decided, you know what, February 15th, that's an off week. We're not supposed to have an episode. I'm going to do a double feature because we like people <laughs> who contest so much. <laughs> So then we had, you know, two more stores. But I'm, but but then I'm, I'm, I coax uh, another actor who lives in town to come over and do one of Brian's stories. And, oh, she's so awesome! And and she's like, yes. so when is this gonna be? And I'm like, um, not for another six months. <laughs> and it's so <laughs> surreal because of what we're doing and how far ahead we've planned everything. I can't wait to the day where I'll be actually be able to. To say, oh, hey, your thing, your show, you remember? She's like, I don't remember you. I don't remember you know, it's so crazy about that, man. You guys, like, like I, I sit here and I listen to it, and I go on my, my whiteboard. I have this big whiteboard that I uh, I, I put all the stories on, and I, I check them off, and I, I put reds or yellows, and like I, I, it's weird color-coded, just, I'm sorry, reds and blues. But it's just really just color-coded, just nightmare, so to speak. But, um. I look at this and everybody's like, yeah, you know, this story's not till March next year. And I'm sitting here like, yeah, but I got a patron episode to release in the offhand every week here. And it's like, I don't know. It's just, it's a lot going on, but I'll tell you what, man, holy craps, a lot of fun. And some talented people in this world that people don't know about. You know what? You need to tune into gray rooms. We got some, uh, we got some yes. names that you all need to hear, man. There's some talented people out there. And we have had the opportunity to work with them, and and we will meet every deadline. That is a guarantee. Plus, and, oh, and uh, by the way, you get this for being a <laughs> patron. <laughs> well, that's the crazy thing too, because the patrons get to listen to it a week in advance. So it's like, yep. oh, we're trying to meet these deadlines, but we actually have to have it a week before the deadline for the patrons. So. If you're an impatient person, I mean, what you put like down two dollars a month, and you can listen to it. Yeah, yeah. two dollars. Two dollars. I got to, I got to listen. Amazing. Black Friday. That is, you know, as more as less than the cost of this amazing. <laughs> from oh hey, can I get a website for that shirt? Where did you get that from? Oh, you can actually go to the uh, the the grayrooms.com, and you can just mm -hmm. click right there, and it says merchandise. Boom! So it connects you right to the T Public uh, page to buy them. No, Is you'll have to click again. Okay. <laughs> hey, Jason, click twice. It's okay. When you say merchandise, can you do the Doctor Evil thing? Just <laughs> merchandise. <laughs> merchandise. <laughs> merchandise. <laughs> Bo Chapel, Joe Bo Chapel for the win. <laughs> oh, which by the way, speaking of uh, merchandise, I actually wanted to tell Brian. I just got my. I just today got my copy of Dystopia. <laughs> But uh, um, oh yeah, I yeah I wanted to. Oh oh oh, oh. oh Brian's gone. There, Bye Brian. There. No no I I, I wanted to. <laughs> you know, this is uh, <laughs> the Aphotic Realm magazine. By the way, this is uh, I'm actually in this. This Toby. Yes, you are. A, a recent Lovecraft episode in their uh, or episode uh, magazine, and their <laughs> newest one, if you submit stories, is called Fang uh, as their theme. So they're going to do that. You can do all kinds of different beasties and things like that. I'd really like to do a Mongolian deathworm story. So if I have time, I might try to do that. 
A Mongolian right. death worm. What is that? Yeah. Mongolian death worm. It's, you know what? I feel like I should know this. But yeah, those creatures from like Dune. You know, like the yes, one Okay, thank you. I was yeah, thinking Dune. There's yeah. one the, the, at the, the bottom spice. of every bottle of. What was the name of your beer again? Wait, raging bitch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> raging bitch. Uh, every, raging bottle of, every bottle of raging bitch <laughs> IPA is a Mongolian death worm. Yes, it, oh, it feels like IPA it's with spice. <laughs> no, but it's like. Uh, Seriously, if you are watching here, if you you can, we would always love and appreciate you being a patron or listening. Feel free to <laughs> feel Is feel free a... to stop on over to John Sheriff stuff too, man. Uh, JamSheriffMusic.com, and then uh, I don't know, Graham Rowett. Where can they find me? That's right, GrahamRowett.com or GrahamNY at Twitter. Uh, that's for New York. You know, like for New York. Like for New York. <laughs> you you know what, man? That's going to be a running <laughs> thing forever. I, like, caught, I, I caught that, Jason. I caught, every, every time you say it. Grand. I wasn't certain whether he was just re, reusing the one from the from the previous episode. I thought right. he might have just cut and pasted it. I well, they might be idea. looking up Graham M.Y. We never know. So we need to uh, clarify. No, no, no. That guy's a jerk. Uh, oh, okay. that? Graham M.Y. Don't Where go to Graham, Graham M.Y. Okay, Graham M.Y. Brian accent. is making great audio by holding up a cat. Oh. <laughs> For those of you listening on Friday or afterwards, it was a beautiful cat. You know, I thought I saw a tail go by on the screen. Can you hear those colors? I can hear them. Uh, they sound very black and white. To me. That's my... That's my uh, oh, no. It's yeah. Penn Central in here, dude. This is crazy. <laughs> my next uh, is going to be about cats and the abuse they take from their owners. It's going to be great. Oh, you Which, would never by the way... This. You're a cat man. Sh should we mention that the next story is coming out? Um, gosh dang it. I don't have the uh, date in front of me. What's today's date? Second. It's going to be a December date. Is yes, December twelfth. Yep, we're we're there at least. It's uh not this Friday, but next Friday. <laughs> Unless yeah. you're a patron. Oh, yeah, that's you right. Then it's up. then it's in a, a few days. You'll get it. But yeah, that's a uh, no, not the twelfth. It's right, December the fourteenth. Thank you, Graham. And that'll be fascinating because not only will the Behind the Door episode that we're recording right now come out that day, if you're a patron, you would also get I Loved My Human. Oh, is that episode number two? Yes. Oh, sweet. By Michael, is... who was writing Falling. So uh -huh. if you the really like Falling, now you have a story where he has a lot more words in it. It's longer. It's going to be more exciting. And uh, it is going to still end abruptly, though. When no one's expecting. No. Is that I, a spoiler? <laughs> I just remember when I read Falling. And I'm like, spoiler? What? But that's the end? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. It's not a spoiler. But I just remember the, the one thing about Falling that was so off-putting to me. And yet, I think what makes it so special was that I was like, but this guy didn't do anything. Why did you just do that to him? And that's actually was so unsettling that I was. Anyway. Grim, <laughs> I, I love my human. That's the one we're looking towards right now. And uh, J.M. Sheriff is actually in this too. He's in this a bit more. Actually, I'd say more than he was in uh, the. Um, yeah, no, he came in late. It's so great to have him in there. And uh, yeah, Ruth Thomas is going to be the lead actress in this story. Victoria Wan plays yeah, the Victoria. teddy bear. I feel and like they're uh, pretty much. I haven't listened to this. Is it a? Is it a? Is I feel like is it? Is you'll, it? A, you'll is hear there it. A you'll hear. Is there is a? Is there a first or second? I feel like it's. Uh, you, well, you would know. So I didn't. No, I, I got lead. the impression that it was the the two of them. Yeah. Pretty much handing back and forth. No, Thomas. Yeah. No, Sarah Ruth Thomas plays. The oh, I love all the. Uh, you got sorry, censored. You got. Yeah, censored. plays the what? <laughs> no, no, no. We don't. Spoiler. You're gonna have to just. Watch. You're right. You're very good point, Brian. Thank you. Was that a Thank well placed? You. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, Sarah Ruth Thomas, Victoria right. Wan, uh, <laughs> myself, and my wife play some really crappy people in this story. So we apologize. Nice. You play happy people? No crap. No. Oh, crappy people. Crappy. No, we play crappy people. Oh. Yes. Oh. Yeah, we play. Yeah, we're we're, we're terrible. And people. and then. And then, then, then uh, and also shout out to Christina as the ethereal voice of I was just gonna say, yes. The the, the other the door that that mm -hmm. that we just Raymond just can't bring himself to open. Behind the Do you know one. that song? Can you have a song she was humming? 
I hope it's a song. Right. <laughs> where the road goes. I don't. Um... I love Inya, but that's not the song. Oh no! Next that one. on to the next. Can you name the song, Brian? You don't Sorry, count, fire. You know it. You can't say it. Don't say a damn word. Um, Brian knows everything. I I no I don't. Well, yeah, I told you. <laughs> I told you what. It Brian was. definitely knows now. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying. I don't know. You, you weren't paying attention. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> By the way, it's funny because Jason did mention earlier about talking to uh, JM when he's on his mail route, and that's exactly what I pretty much do. That's how we just we talk about all of our stuff. He's he's wandering around putting mail in your mailbox and talking about this. <laughs> yeah, yeah talking about actually, uh, uh, people and <laughs> doing horrible, horrible things when he's delivering your mail. Just yeah, as, as long if it has glass, I throw it. As far as I can. <laughs> what does fragile mean? I don't understand this word. I know, really. Right? I'm not Italian. Like I said, I am from English immigrants. There you so, go. <laughs> hey, you might even deliver your gray room. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> You're really good at that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I want to see someone on social media with a yellow or like a red version of the gray rooms because I don't know. I just, I just picture all the shirts being gray or black. I can't yeah. see any other color schemes. Like a like a nice pastel, like an Easter yeah. pastel. Yeah, like well, that's, a, that's actually you're... a beautiful thing about T Public, man. You're right, they you offer can all go that. on to T Public, and you can order it in any color you want. Yeah. And yeah. shades, different shades, like names of colors I've never heard. Yeah. Like yeah, really lean into the irony of it all. Like yeah, and you can put logo, it on and listen to the latest episode and just like, like a cry cyan. Your... <laughs> I will say though, I think that beige taupe the... color. I think a great war skull with the you know with the helmet and everything. I think that would make a great shirt. We don't have one, but I'm just saying. Yes, well, mediocre is really good with uh, his art. So yeah, yes. all of his stuff would look great on t-shirts. If yeah. you would Which... like a shirt for the great uh, for the great war, you should you should hit us up and let us know. Uh, we probably make one happen. Brian, we'll just put it on the T Public. It will be oh, available man. on T Public. Yeah, come on, <laughs> spill the beans. Feel free. You know, we'll get some phone cases, a couple pillows. You know what? If you got a toddler, just throw them in a onesie. It oh, is I a rat in a helmet on my pillow. That would be yeah, amazing. why not? No big deal. <laughs> I want my little child to have a onesie with a freaking rat crawling out of the skull. Yeah. <laughs> be amazing. <laughs> as long as you pick the blanket. right color scheme, we're good. Right? That's right. No yellows or reds. I'm at the age, though, where I, uh, I'm too old to wear uh, graphic tees. I, no, I you're have, not. No, you're never too old. No. It's how you feel. Well, it's time. tricky. It's tricky. If you, if you, That's if it's lie. subtle, I don't mind wearing like a, a Planet Express, Planet Express T-shirt, and maybe people won't know what it is. Or I wear it to the gym. But now I just mostly buy my artwork on mugs. But then the problem is when that shelf gets mm -hmm. stacked with two layers of mugs, and you're like, I guess I'm never going to enjoy this art. And <laughs> yeah, we need to get Grandma Brony T-shirt. Oh, Brony shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I have uh, with, with this, so I, I did want to give a big thank you to everybody involved. Mr. Graham Rowett uh, for doing excellent work. Alistair Mackey, I can't wait uh, for everybody to hear his full potential uh, for the certain man. That guy is, let me tell you what, uh, he delivers well. Uh, Brian Black, well, I mean, it's Brian. Come on, Brian. You know, I love you, man. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Jay Dams, the, the, the new guy, uh, new guy on the campus here. But I tell you what, he's really, really delivering something. Good. And uh, I think he awesome. did, too. I loved my human. Uh, and that's going out to both Graham and Brian. I can't wait to you guys hear what he did, too. I love my human. It's awesome. It is awesome. And then to all of our patrons that are listening, uh, we 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 love you guys seriously you you really help support this show and, and keep it going and to just anybody who listens in general thank yeah. you ever so much i i never thought that this would ever get a thousand downloads let alone the the multiples it has so thank you all i mean seriously and brooks you're a patron and mm -hmm. uh and you saved my uh behind the other night from my <laughs> own like i said synaptic misfires we and i i uh, straight appreciate that and i, I do know you. a wave file is bigger than an mp3 <laughs> <laughs> so, i don't just know. in case I don't yeah know. 
Oh, I will always support you, my friend. No worries. No worries. Well, I love you guys, man. Seriously, mm-hmm. all of you. Thank you. Hey, can I uh, introduce like where to find everybody on uh, social media here? Please. Are we, are we cool with that? So uh, Jason Wilson, the uh, creator and audio producer. Uh, you can find him on Twitter at Audio Torment. Uh, Brian oh, just Black. looking really good. Uh, and you really nailed, you know, Jason avoided Twitter for a long time. And then he, he right. finally joined it and landed the coolest uh, Twitter handle I've heard in a long time. Yeah, so well played. Well like, played. I'm going to say Christina came up with it. Yeah, I no. like I like her. She don't know nothing about that jazz. She don't know nothing. What does that? What does her Twitter uh, description say? Like her little profile? Like she might have. Pull. Is that she knows? Is she, she has some control or pull with the gray room? <laughs> she she says uh, she says wife of Jason of the gray room. I might have some pull. There you go. That's awesome. I don't know. Uh, oh. Maybe a little bit. Uh, a little bit. <laughs> All right, so so the uh, the author of this wonderful story, The Great War, is uh, Brian Black. Um, you can find him at um, at Darth Chair. I I missed the explanation from the last uh, Behind the Doors. Please tell me uh-huh. what, what is I the origin of this. I came up with it. Wait, who's that? That just <laughs> was that. Was there that she is again. There she is again. <laughs> came up with audio torment. You heard it here. You heard it here. The one with all the pole came up yeah. with the name Darth Chair. No, 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 no. She came. That was Christina saying she came up with audio torment. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. I got it. <laughs> yeah, I, don't I will let that go. I've had for a long time. <laughs> I just thought, you know, like all those Sith lords always have these goofy names. So Darth Chair, don't Sith on me. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's perfect, man. I like when people put thought into. Uh, to their Twitter handles. <laughs> Mine's just my name, so you know I thought really hard in that one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> our, our, <laughs> oh, there she is. There she is. She's pulling the. She's pulling the the curtain. She's the. She's the woman behind the curtain. Oh, she's the one oh. in control. Oh, it all makes sense. She's the great Wizard of Oz or the great. Honey, don't oh, ruin my cool moving blanket room. Come on. <laughs> You that's know, really like, Graham, one day I'm going to get one of those. I know. <laughs> if, if, if he has to do is just wait till you know Christina just pulls the curtains away, and then Raymond can escape the gray rooms. That's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> uh, our fantastic, fantastic British actor. Oh no, you're not British, but you played a British person, uh, Graham Rowett. You can find Graham at. Uh, at Graham NY, you know, like uh, that's York. for New York, yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> oh. that's I wanted I you to say, <laughs> I'm, I'm never gonna do that again. You. That's, all you. that's all you, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> love you. Well done. Um, any, any words, Graham? I don't want to interrupt. No, you. no, that was good. No, no, that's where you find me. Um, I'm also rocking the Instagram, <laughs> yeah, which is named after me. Hey, Graham. you did it there. You did it that time. I didn't, I did not do it. No, you didn't. Uh, also, you know, it's not easy to run an Instagram feed for an audio podcast, but those who want to come visit the gray rooms on Instagram, uh, that's uh, something that I like to to keep up to date. You have those um, audio to video things that you put up. Right? I do. I try oh, to put up some audiograms. Yeah. I try to put some audiograms right. up, which are cool, making a little making them uh, taking some words and making them look cool. And I also, uh, I, I just reposted on Instagram, the 60 second version of that trailer from back in, was it April? Uh, and I oh made this little video uh, that I'm very proud of to go with that 60 second cut. And uh, for those of you who want to go to Instagram, check it out. It's really cool. Um, <laughs> totally, man. Graham does. Graham just like, <laughs> yeah, his, Graham just killed he it. He likes to uh, kind of, you know, he, he goes and takes the initiative to do things. And he says, hey, you know, what do you think of this? I mean, he's done a lot of uh, promos. We didn't have an episode art artist for falling. And pretty much like, you know, a couple times, a, like a couple times a week, Graham, like, hey, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? So Graham is a really hard worker. Because uh, I was yes, just, I is. was, I had taken the reins for the Instagram, uh, the Instagram account. And I was like, what the heck do I put up here? 
And so I would just mess around coming up with images that would be cool for the, for the, for falling and everything from, I'm like, what if it was like a, what if it was like a, a piece of cloth with a tear in it and you saw the sky through it and then you made that black and white and, and blew it out. And then you just put falling. And I'm like, all those things I'm like, and there, and the great thing is that no one was going to say, no, you can't do that because we were all sort of making something out of nothing. So that was a lot of fun. And that's kind of the joy of this is we're making something from nothing, but what we're making is so fun and exciting. And that I think, you know, the JM's response to this was like, Hey, yeah, I want to get on board on this. Uh, it's just so, uh, it's so addictive and, and fun. And, and it's exciting that other people are checking it out. And that's the thing, like, you know, we had the Twitter, um, and then I had taken it over and tried to do things with it. And that's at the gray rooms, pod.com or dot com at the gray rooms <laughs> pod. Uh, Facebook is at the gray rooms pod as well. Uh, we have a, community called the great rooms emotional support group there's currently about 68 people in it i believe and it's it's great um we've been having a good time uh just kind of talking about the shows uh especially candace greens everybody has discovered mm -hmm. that when we create an episode all of a sudden for some reason all of That's the right. horrors that we've produced have affected the real world uh we had all kinds of horror stories about <laughs> spiders I'm really hoping World War III doesn't start. Oh, yeah. That would be like uh, my fault. I'm sorry. You can blame me. Send me hate mail. I don't care. I but, should uh, set up a Google alert for rat stories. Yeah, I have yeah. rats in my garage now. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you can send all that hate mail to Brian at thegrayrooms.com. That's what <laughs> There you go. You can, uh, and we do have go. our submissions open. You can send it at uh, submissions at the gray rooms.com. We're looking for stories for episode or episode season two. Um, basically keep it first person past tense. We'd like around 3,500 words. Um, and you... there's a great article on, there's a great post on the gray rooms, uh, dot com detailing the whole season two submission thing. If you, if you want to just direct them to that. No, I know. I, but my, my thing is people have been asking. Oh, cool. Minimum. Uh, I don't want to get short stories. Try to keep it around 3,500. If you can go longer at 4,000, we'll accept it. But try to keep it around that sweet spot just so we have the nice length for our stories, but not overly long like like mine are. Jason hates yeah. the Great War. He, he loves it, but he hates it. Um, he never wants to listen to it again or look at my story. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I still have Ice Station Bravo to deal with, man. I can handle it. <laughs> oh, oh man, goodness. Arthur's in there, Suck. man. Threw him under the bus. Yeah. I, I, I love, I love that story, but holy crap, I'm not looking forward to actually like replacing all the sounds and everything with it. It's. <laughs> By is the this way, going to be like an epic episode. What, what's, uh, what's oh, the hesitation man. here? Oh uh, man, Graham this said this was my Waterloo. That's his Ooh. exact words. Wow. Did I say Waterloo? Yes. Yeah. It's it's uh, I mean, although, you know, after after listening to the Great War, I, I think it's and I, I listened to an early cut of uh, I Station and it's 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 in it's already in amazing shape. So but it is a it's a it's an epic it's a it's an epic story on the scope of a of a motion picture. So, yes. Is there a range of length between episodes, Jason, where you might have a couple that are like 30, 40 minutes, but you might have like a really big kind of opus almost it's like over an hour like how, how is the structure of the show going to be like that are they all going to be yeah. around the same length well, well hopefully they're all going to be roughly around the same length okay. but i mean you know we we didn't really look into how long it was going to how long the story was going to be because we don't know how long the story is going to be in production mm -hmm. you don't but every story is going to be the same or at least every episode is going to be the same in this sense you're going to have the intro you're going to experience something from Raymond. You're going to hear the story. And then I'm going to say good night. Or maybe it's Brian or maybe it's Graham or whatever. We'll figure that out. But every, we're going to be consistent in the fact that we're going to uh, deliver when we say we do. And you're going to get the same thing. All this open. Boo, 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 boo. Awesome. Um, um, 
Oh, go ahead. Christine, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I was trying to figure out what Christina was asking us to do, uh, and it could have. But then she said, "Ignore me." Um, but I, I would like to thanks. Uh, she did make me think that it'd be. You know, we 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 would like to say thank you to uh, the No Sleep Podcast, who were very generous in mentioning yes. us uh, in their season eleven mm -hmm. finale. And also for giving us a shout out on the uh, on their Twitter uh, account on uh, Friday on our launch day, um, no doubt that uh, brought some people over, and that was that was fantastic. No, I, I wanted to give a big shout out to the No Sleep Podcast. Thank you, David Cummings. Ever so much. I, I I don't think he'll listen to this, or if he does, <laughs> I I mean I, I don't know, but he's watching I, now, Jason. Well, oh, oh, holy crap! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean. And, I mean, hold on. I mean, oh. bring the calm out a little bit. There you go. Straighten <laughs> the beard. Like a, the, the No Sleep podcast was literally what got me. I, you know, I've always been into audio and all that kind of stuff. I, 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 I actually worked, like I said, I went to school for audio engineering and, and I worked in internet radio. And that's what got me started with the whole editing and everything. And I, I've always been kind of one to just. I wanted to go to school to make movies and video games. Like work, I wanted to make them sound awesome. That's what I always wanted. Fast forward umpteen billion years, I'm doing my mail route, and I, 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 I'm listening to Lore, and then he has a little advertisement for a thing called No Sleep that I ignore a few times. I start listening to No Sleep podcast. I become a huge fan of what they're doing because they do a great thing there at the no sleep podcast. I love their story. I love, I, I, I love David. I love everything that they do. And I became a big fan and, and listening to them. What? I can do this. I can do this. I can do something that would, uh, that, that, that would, that, 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 that these guys would be proud of. And so because of David Cummings, because of the No Sleep podcast and uh, because of my mail route uh, enabling me to listen to them, I decided to start the Gray Rooms podcast. And yeah, it, it, the fact that David Cummings gave us the shout out on his Twitter and everything else like that. And, and, and <laughs> I'll tell you what, you don't know what it feels like, people. When somebody that you actually look up to mentions you by name mm -hmm. on their podcast internationally, um, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. I, I almost had no emotion because I had so much emotion to the fact that David Cummings announced our podcast because of Grant on their season finale. So the date, the, Basically, in a lo lo the long run on this is that David Cummings and the No Say podcast have so much to do with the gray rooms big time. They, they brought it along. And, and David Cummings, if you are listening, thank you. I do admire you, sir. And one day I am going to shake your hand. It'll be a sweaty hand. But he'll, big time. But, but, big time. <laughs> Maybe not not David's hand. Your, his is nice and dry and and a, a gray room shirt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Have a gray and don't wear your favorite shirts. I uh, shoes. I may uh may. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> for those for those listening at home, he he mimed throwing up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, can we can we give uh, J M? Let's give your information too. Um, no doubt you are going to be kind of. Carry it along here. You're doing more music with the Gray Rooms. Um, yeah, yeah. You uh, can be found at JM Scherf Music, all one word, on Twitter. Yes. yes. Um, you, and you said you have a website too, right? Uh, yeah. J it's same thing, jmscherfmusic.com. Uh, we'll kind of bring you to my main uh, like portal uh, where I have my portfolio and projects that I'm working on. And uh, my stock music business is darkmatterstockmusic.com. Okay, cool. I got a question for JM just randomly, even though we're wrapping up. You have such a huge array of music that you've created. Is there an, is there, in what situation when you get a, like a story from the gray rooms, are you like, are you always thinking of 
I'm going to write something new and fresh. Uh, I imagine that's probably the most rewarding thing, but you also can go, oh yeah, I just go, dig, 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 dig. there's 50 things I've already written that would fit this. Um, Is there a... I feel like it's cheating if I do that. Sure. Um, but I will like, uh, I'll go back and be like, oh, there was something I did in another song. Maybe I could take that and, and kind of change it or, or maybe, oh, I like the mood. Of right. that song so i could kind of like go with the mood but i try every time i'm on a new project to do something new because it's uh it's more fulfilling that way i guess cool yeah. cool thanks yeah that's yeah. great yeah and i mean it's not it wouldn't be very artistically fulfilling if you're just pulling stuff from your right from your yeah. bag that's great yeah, that's cool. yeah awesome do we still have jason with us uh oh. No yeah, sorry. Give me a split second. He's switching sorry. over to okay. uh, an Go old juice can <laughs> and a string. <laughs> Go get my tin. Hold on. <laughs> He's got one of those tins of bully beef. That's That's right. Right. Empty the bully beef out real quick. <laughs> yeah, my I got my bully beef phone. Hello. <laughs> oh my gosh. Can you say I have mud on the tip of my bayonet? I think Gemma would really appreciate that. I got mud on the tip of my bayonet. I think you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> oh no! What's to clean it off? I I, I cannot. Do it. <laughs> cannot. Oh no! I didn't actually get the initial double. I think. All right. Anyway, uh, Jason is going to. Sorry. Be... Hey. Hi, he's back. Your your wife just said what you you were doing. That's yeah, I, I I had I had I had to go potty. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you broke the seal. How dare! I've had two beers and I have not broke the seal yet. Sir, I've had three Hello. of these. Hello. Oh. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm Michael Kane. Hello. I'm Michael Kane. Oh, I'm trying, I don't have it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Not feeling uh, it. I do request. If, 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 if Wait. I may, guys, I just oh, wanted yeah, to yeah, say that it's. Uh oh. Oh, I had a request. If if Graham was doing a request, yes, sir. I had a request. Yes, sir. You do your Graham. Thing. Graham, yeah. can you please do the bodybuilder voice, please? Oh my oh, God! Please, that one awesome. Come on! I listened to that episode, dude. <laughs> uh, I don't even remember. I just need the text in front of me. All I know is that I tried to pitch my. All I did was pitch you my voice down. Like, and yeah. I just put it down here as low as yeah. I could, and I just talked like that guy. Total badass. And you just like your muscle. I could feel your muscles just listening. <laughs> well, to this story. the trick is not to go. The trick is not to go into bro, man. Because no, you were never bro. Right. That was no. that was because the temptation was like, yeah, I'm at the gym and I'm working out, so I'm gonna be no. this guy. And I'm like, that would just turn it into a cartoon. You were roided out, American Psycho, is what you were <laughs> down here. Just That's what, down there. Wow. What a, wow. Down there. How do you hurt a great movie like that, Brooks? By the way. I didn't mean to hurt it. That was not. Oh my, my god! Intention. Roided out American Psycho. Well, actually, well, he he was so. No, what I meant is he was so no, confident. I, I he, I, he was I, definitely roided out in his the I no step story. Back. I but step he was back. he I was apologize. just so he was just so methodical about how crazy he was. <laughs> I I actually have a friend who was in American Psycho. She was one of the uh, the prostitutes who I think she kept her clothes on, but she uh, she didn't make. <laughs> I don't think I can't remember if she died or not, but if you see the the CD or the DVD art for American Psycho, uh, she's the girl reflected in the knife blade, which is oh. sort of cool. That's got to be foreboding. I'm. I hey man, need that, to movie that movie is the reason why I'm a Christian Bale fan at all. Yeah, he, he's he's very versatile. Have you seen him in the uh, movie where he, he's really thin? I forget. I think it's called The Machinist. Right. Yeah. And then no. and now there's a movie where he's really fat. He's just all over yeah, all over the place probably bad for his genetics though or his, it plays uh, the the heart, genetics. his genet he's damaging his genetics if he has kids they're gonna turn wave up. is bigger than mp3 <laughs> we're all entitled to one gaff one gaff. yeah i was thank fine. you thank you i have them all the time no big deal it is what it is i have one every day <laughs> all right well gentlemen uh are we uh are we gonna wrap this up here i'd wax sure. political with all of you forever but i know that people are probably tired of listening to us well, I know that JM's got to get up early in the morning. So yeah, I wanted yeah. to thank, oh, yes. I wanted to thank all you guys. I'm I don't have any any children, but I know all you guys do, and uh, I really appreciate the fact that you guys are able to take time out with your families to be able to do this uh, behind the scenes. I think that's uh, really great. I know it's not easy, uh, and I think I can speak on behalf of everybody else that's listening and just say, you know, I appreciate what you're doing. I also would like to thank my wife, who's 
on the chat room as well and just thank her for being patient with me because you know this when we do these things it, it does take a lot of time um, whether we're writing whether we're working on the audio part of it doing voice acting it's just something that you know there's a sacrifice made and uh, mm-hmm. i think uh, i really appreciate yeah. everybody for for putting up with us doing this project especially when you have a day job you and jason have a day job so it's amazing absolutely just beyond amazing that you guys are getting this done within the time frames that you're allowed well and the thing is too is also think that jm is in this mix too as well and he works his butt off there in the day and uh yeah he's uh, i'll tell you what I, again graham brian do be ready for what he did to a uh, love to my human because it's it's really good man it's really good and i i i i also gotta thank um you know t public Christina, uh, t public <laughs> There we go, everybody. Come the on. only one without a shirt. <laughs> Does JM have the shirt? Do you have the shirt, JM? Uh, yes. It's on the premises, yeah. Okay, so you <laughs> got I'm the only one. I'm oh, the one. Terrible. For those yeah, of you listening at home, we all just showed off our Graham's t- Gray Rooms t-shirt again. <laughs> Mine is so gray you can't see it. It's buried, you know, buried in the details. So. This that's is, our, this that's is our new one. Shirt. This is so great. You're right. His is put- so gray it went black and blank. You had to put lime juice on That's it to insane. see where it says gray rooms. That's how you do it. You know what's like, <laughs> funny is my wife even has a gray room shirt, Brooks. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I mean, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right i'm gonna order like five as penance okay i, oh, I hand nice. them out to everyone in the family i'll see if i can get you a discount oh no discounts you no 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 i hate that <laughs> i will buy it fully to pay for my sins and we will uh, we will atone so. <laughs> you don't get a discount on atonement <laughs> uh, you, sir <laughs> yeah that's a good quote put that on a mug do well, they sell a variation in China where it's spelled with an A? The gray I room? think they come from China anyway. Oh. So I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't. If I'm not mistaken, you can get a Grey Rooms beanie hat too, right? Yes, sir. And a onesie. Oh, and uh, a oh, ki- a ki- and uh, you can get some phone cases. And you can get some pillows. You can get a tote bag. Um, yeah, you can go, and there's all kinds of options. You can do color <laughs> options. Guess what? You can accessorize. You can buy it. You can put like you can put little glitter things on there, bedazzle the f out of that thing. It's Ooh. all you when you get it. This is no Keep longer gray. gray rooms. This is colorful, man. <laughs> <laughs> and the volume just sort of fades out, and Brooks comes in and saying, "Jason continued like that for several minutes." <laughs> <laughs> Oh Jesus! You know, oh man, we have it. There's going to be a spike. A T public awesome. rush. <laughs> like we should, you know, they should give us a sponsorship just for this episode. Dude, we're an affiliate, and I have no yeah. idea how that works. I have no idea. How, <laughs> I have no idea how it works. I have no idea. They sent me an email like, "You're an affiliate. Thanks a lot." Yeah, it's on the I'll Email them again. Yeah. I, I don't know. You know what, Brooks? I'll call you. Maybe you can help me because I am. I'm also an affiliate. I am. Are you? No, no, no. I'm not. I'm saying they're buttering you up is what I'm saying. They're greasing you, man. They're like, oh, oh, okay. Well, that's two shirts now instead of five. You're good. (laughs) You're good. So thank you. (laughs) No, but again, uh, I I, I seriously want to take the time to thank uh, Brian for being Brian and yes, Brian calls me and I'm slamming doors. I'm never happy at work. I'm sorry, but I do appreciate your call. I call one of the Wendy's and make them hungry. It's yeah, dude, straight up. And that's my favorite restaurant. Why you gotta be calling me all the time when you go out through Wendy's like, yeah, I would order some Wendy's. And I'm like, what? (laughs) I'm out here. Here's your frigging package. And I can't (laughs) order Wendy's anyways. So, and then Brian, (laughs) you know, I love you. you. You know that, you absolutely know I love you, man. Like, like, like you, you've helped me make this what it is. And uh, you did a really good job on the Raymond story. You did a great job on the Raymond story. And uh, you've done a really good job at making sure that this all connects together. And I, I greatly appreciate that. Graham, I mean, come on now, bro. Uh, 
You it, you always we know deliver. we know we know we know <laughs> round of applause. We I I know oh, you know. <laughs> I can I can never sit here and, and and talk about how much I love Graham Road. Graham oh, Road is a piece of room somewhere. He, 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 Graham Road has really opened the door wide the, to the great rooms. He has really helped us uh, to not only procure, procure great talent, but to just uh, make sure that we keep ourselves in check. Because Graham's really there sometimes to make sure that me and Brian know what in the hell we're doing. And it's it's absolutely wonderful. And, we, and and I personally appreciate that. I always appreciate you and what you do. I always will. Thank you for emailing me. Thank you. You were a big part of the success of this very first episode. And you're going to be a big part of the uh, rest of the season, as is Brian. And I don't know what in hell Brian is doing, but he does. <laughs> he's showing us that beautiful uh, gray rooms T-shirt. Oh, he's quickly chalk drawing a gram. Wendy's. Oh, oh nice. <laughs> and then uh, uh, I just wanted to give a huge shout out to uh, Mr. J M Scherf. Wait a minute, is uh, are you giving who's who's getting the biggest shout out here? Is he's getting a huge one? I well, felt like mine was pretty huge. Yours is huge. All yours right. was large. If, if you, if we wanted, right. to, if we wanted to stand okay. around okay. in a right. circle by the campfire and whipped out the proverbial huge shoutouts, I'm just crying. Right. The levels of the degrees of shouting out and our patrons, right. our patrons. Oh, one. nice save! Yeah. <laughs> they get the biggest shout. Oh, they, oh, they have the huge. They, they're the ones who are always like, yeah, yeah. Well, can you fill this? And yeah. No, wait. The, I think right no. We that metaphor is. Let's just stay with the shouting metaphor. Oh, it <laughs> <This> matters. <laughs> Brian well, says. Get, <laughs> Like I'm at a baseball J. M. Sure. game. Jay, I'm sure. Jay, I'm sure. Help me write this uh, in, in the, the initial uh, the initial season opener, and um, it really it, good job. Nice shot. Did you do it? Is that Kevin Durant? Oh no, LeBron. No, you failed. For those listening at home, <laughs> Brian threw a scrunched up piece of paper off screen, and Jason wonders if he made it into the wastebasket. And Brian gave it's a thumbs down. Waste basket. I just threw it. Just threw oh! it into the corner. Oh, and yet hey. and yet you still made us think that you missed the imaginary basket. So you could have said. Uh, well, I didn't know you were going to explain to the people. I they got to <laughs> understand what, what Jason was talking about. It's guys. Most people are going to hear this as audio. You know, I'm starting to think that uh, we need to just do a random podcast. Probably. <laughs> Oh wait, hold on. What, is, what did what did Brooks what did Brooks hold on? You know, that said, help me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. I didn't have a paper, so I had to use the pen on the phone. Help me instead of how many times do we wrap this show up and then keep going? Yeah. Well, anyways. So welcome Jay, to the I'm show. Sure if, like uh, he he wrote the intro to the to the this um, that he ever really initially thought that I would uh, reach out to him, and. And I, man, high five to that guy for coming on board and just having to deal with what I throw at him. And you know what, Brian, you hate the audio jungle. Could you imagine writing the audio jungle and like writing music to the audio jungle? So it's true. Hats off to JM, man. Like he's he's hearing the raw version of everything, and he's coming on and he's really making it thick because he really made the last half of uh that great war just mm -hmm. what it was. So thank. All of you, Brooks, for not just being a patron, for being just a wonderful human being, for just <laughs> doing this for us, man, and uh, and for and for being there, somebody we could talk to, and somebody we can always shout out. And Brooks and, is and the secret the, weapon, man. Still, okay. still, he saved my our, our new a noose the other night when I was having mm. synaptic misfires. Mis mm -hmm. That's although, for sure. Although, in fairness, it's one in the morning. You're trying to get the episode yeah. out. I am literally getting into bed. I have my son getting up. You have your son getting up. And I'm like, I can't stay up any longer to help you. But who is who could potentially help who is in another time zone? And I texted I texted Brooks and I'm like, can I give you Jason's phone number to help us get through the launch? And I know, but I mean, you probably were going to bed too, but you saved you. You got us over the hump. My first question, literally, just my first text to Jason was, "Jason, what size is the file?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's not there. Oh, oh, oh he went pee wonderful. again. Oh well. Why is he <laughs> peeing in a bottle three, three like the rest tea. of us? Man. <laughs> is that your secret? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> for those long nights of recording oh, truckers yeah, truckers trucker secret oh the gatorade bottle that's right i've heard about that before it has a bigger neck <laughs> i don't know i i don't I don't, no one no one no one's is going to listen all the way to the end of this podcast anyway. i know if, if we're not going to hell we're definitely going to the gray rooms so it's definitely well, there well, Graham, it, only because it's we're, like at the end of two hours what's that brian sorry so you've been drinking from that little can of sparkling water. So, yeah. I mean, I saw it, Jason. He had that huge tankard of 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 some kind of beer. Yeah, that was like a Texas sized beer right there. Yeah. That was, was yeah. you know, you know, There's... Jason. You know, Jason's like it's podcast time. <laughs> <laughs> like Popeye with his spinach. Oh, yeah. Christina. Well, Christina, you know what? We'll put the theme song in the final. Uh, in the final edit of this, we'll we'll insert some of the theme song. That's a good idea. But you know, people love that theme song. I mean, it's one of the things that people have been really praising. So, yep. good job, JM. You should be really proud of yourself on that. Yep. My okay. hands hurt from all the clapping. <laughs> yeah. And the patting on the back. That's not easy either. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Both hands, JM. Come very on, very tiring. Practice. Very tiring. Yeah, yeah. All right. There you go. You got it's it. It's funny though because that was made so long ago but we weren't able to use it until the november 30th release of our you know of of the great war i mean it's been around three since... days ago yeah oh yeah. we didn't you didn't use that in the the for the april trailer no that was the first no. time in the debut episode oh wow yeah, i noticed that too and in fact the people were thinking because we had jm listed on our twitter as you know for the music People were actually attributing Jam for all of the music that was on our podcast. So oh. Jam was just getting credit for everybody. He's he's the man. Oh, I just take credit for my stuff. That's okay. <laughs> I really like that pop music that you made for uh, for Lookalike. It was done really well. <laughs> <laughs> After I heard Lookalike, I was like, uh, oh, I, I I wanted it to do that. <laughs> I was I wanted to get it on that episode, even though it was done already. <laughs> yeah i can't imagine what your response is you're like oh oh what was that what is that what is that music no oh, oh. even though to our ear it's like oh that's 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 really cool but i mean as a as a musician knowing that jason was probably pulling songs that were pre-made and making them work as someone you're like oh i could have done this thing yep. for you right right yes yeah well that's why the well, preseason uh, episode just so he knows that he will be on a lot of the episodes from this point forward, uh, JM will have the take in that. Yeah. Yep. yep. Excellent. JM is also going to go back and do director's cuts of the preseasons. I'm going to rescore everything. Yeah. Rescore everything. <laughs> yeah. There you go. I want to hear what you come up with for falling. What? Yeah. <laughs> Just some descending chords. There you yeah. go. <laughs> All right, guys. Yeah, let's wrap it up. Thanks again. You guys are awesome, all of you. And we can uh, finish the broadcast, and then we can talk about how we really feel. Yeah, Woo! we can talk about all the people in the chat room. Good night, so, people in the chat room. Thank you, Bo and Arthur and all the family members, because I think – and Charlotte. Those are Charlotte the family – well, yeah. I think she's – yeah. Hi, Charlotte. And D. Is she flipping know, here D. for real? She was. I think she still is. I don't know. Yeah, her last post was uh, not too long ago. So, oh my god, but two she and got a half her... hours. Oh no, she got her three yeah, hours. Charlotte's still awake. She's good. <laughs> All right. Is there anything else we need to thank? We good? We no. That's it. It's just thank these fine so people much. who came and to hang out. Can cool. we thank T Public for those awesome gray room t-shirts? Oh, did you yep. notice my t-shirt? Oh my god, are you wearing one? It says the gray rooms oh, on it. Oh, gray look at that. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Ooh. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. Brooks, thanks oh. for guest those for us. I would also oh, like to yeah. announce that my spin-off show is going to be The Grahams because every time I say The Gray Rooms, I kind of want to go to the Grahams. So the Grahams. I'm gonna, yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah, I have an idea. Why don't you come up with your own award show and call it the Grammys? Yeah, that mm -hmm. works. That works. <laughs> I like it. That's a good <laughs> idea. Seriously, Brooks, thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. Our, our second guest host. We um, have been trying to kind of do this thing where we get a different guest host for every episode. Sergio. Um, 
it's it's great. You know, we had Graham start us off. Now we got Brooks. Um, I, I think know. Brooks. I don't know. I like Brooks a lot. I think Brooks. I think we. <laughs> I would offer love him, to return. Offer him a job. I'd love to return. <laughs> we need to. Uh, yeah, great job, uh, Brooks. We did Super it. weapon. People, but let's. Uh, I don't think we have somebody for for the next one yet. Right. Well, Graham just said, I mean, I guess we can use Brooks. Uh, Brooks. Brooks. <laughs> Maybe Brooks. If you like Brooks a lot, let us know. Uh, you know, hit us up on Twitter. Facebook. It's basically whoever wins the, the follower games. Oh, they get the host. Well, I lost oh. that one. I, the one so, that Brian was doing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was a good follower games. I was. I, I have to admit I was upset because according to your follower games, I killed Man in Lysette. Are you serious? Hey, I, you never. Come. Man and kill Gemma. Oh well, that's also not acceptable. But that doesn't involve me. For those for Why those who sure. don't know what that is, we should just wrap this up, guys. Yeah, it's a, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. thing on Twitter where uh, they make the followers have a fight, and they don't really. It's just fiction, and there's one will survive. Yeah, possibly. It's actually it's actually much more fun than I made it sound. But in the terms of wrapping, up. <laughs> <laughs> who pulls the plug on this? I don't have a button that like. I can do it. I just wrap it up. Be. Thanks again, guys. Much love. Appreciate That's all of you. Yeah, thanks for having me on, guys. Don't <laughs> let it ever end, ever. Is- I'm saying, if I don't hit this button, we're just going to keep going. I guess so. This could be our own great room. We make it to three hours. <laughs> three hours. I wrote, this is our own torment. <laughs> this is no, you know what? Torment. You could individually you could hang up on your own Google Hangout page, and then it would be dead. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, Can't just, hold us captive. Just your own, yeah. Okay. Never coming out ever. Okay. All right, guys. Adore. Thank you so much for being a part of this. We love you. Goodbye.